We got new merch, some new colorways uh, in the Be Good to Yourself collection. We've got hoodies in plum and moss. We've also got t-shirts in lilac, moss, and blue mist. I hope you enjoy those. Those are good colors. Get that hitter and more at theovonstore.com. I want to let you know that we have some new tour dates to announce. January 11th and 12th in Grand Junction, Colorado. We've added a new show there. January 13th, Pueblo, Pueblo, Colorado. January 14th, Denver. We have two shows there. January 15th, down in Fort Collin, Colorado. We are excited to be at the fort. And March 1st, 3rd, and 4th in Boston, Massachusetts. And March 2nd in Medford, Massachusetts. Those are all available at theovon.com slash T-O-U-R. And that will be the return of the rat tour. Today's guest has been a fixture um, in the uh, rap and hip-hop community. Um, he was a part of a lot of our adolescence and young adulthoods. Um, he's, he's a new friend, and I'm grateful to spend time with him uh, and hear, hear about his journey as an entertainer and as a human. Uh, today's guest is Mr. Bubba Sparks. Sparks, baby. What's up, Big Theo? Staying alive, man. Staying alive. Staying alive. Pleasantly present. <laughs> yeah, trying to be. Dude, that's a big thing. Is trying to stay present for me. I yeah. get so caught up sometimes in thinking about everything that I need to do or uh, or, or things I haven't done, and I will get. <laughs> What's that? They always say. You probably heard it. Some of the same places that we've been. Uh, if you got one foot in tomorrow and one foot in yesterday, you're pissing and shitting all over the day. <laughs> oh, I never heard <laughs> that. Yeah, heard that yeah. Uh-uh. Yeah, man. I got, I got a few sayings for you. Yeah, I bet we probably have a lot of the same. So you, because you and I kind of connected over like talking about sobriety and stuff. Right, right. You know? Yeah. Um, can you move this mic just over? Oh. No, no, you don't have to move. But well, you could move this, whatever. As long as it's near your beak, yeah. There we there go. go. And yeah, feel free to move it or whatever. Not sure what to do with my hands. You just do whatever. <laughs> I'm just There's no real way to, you know what to do, I was do, just talking man. shit, okay. man. I was doing Ricky Bobby. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so how's, what's that been like in your life, man? Man, it's just been a back and forth journey. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just been, you know, I've I've had some periods of of recovery, you know what I'm saying? And I've had some periods of sobriety. You know what I'm saying? That weren't necessarily like filled with great recovery. You know what I'm saying? And there's a difference, as you know. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I was just kind of white knuckling it, you know, and sometimes and then sometimes I'm kind of just either on the way to to, you know, things getting bad or like on the way to things back getting good. You know what I'm saying? At, at what point is like the that that turn forward, you know what I'm saying, so to speak, on the racetrack, you know? Yeah. But, you know, I just um I went to treatment back in in uh, February, you know, and it was it was good, but I wouldn't plan to be sober right now. Was know? it a thirty? To, was it what, what? What is it like? I, I mean, I did thirty five days of inpatient. You know what I'm saying? It was kind of weird because of all the COVID protocols. So like, you know how normally when you go to treatment, you can like um, get to go to outside meetings and all that stuff. And you can find a sponsor that way and all that stuff. We were literally like stuck in this one ho- this house like for. It was a cold months, so it was like kind of it was a good deal to be stuck inside. But man, it, it got kind of stir crazy in that joint for sure. And was it all men in there? No, there was some women, but they had like a different little house that they actually would sleep oh. in, and they had to go there like after eight o'clock. They had to go get in their house, and but I ain't gonna say I, I heard tale of some <laughs> some intermingling yeah, yeah. after hours. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I definitely wasn't on that that type of vibe. I have you know in other uh, trips to treatment, I've kind of you know been all about the the female um 
patience. You know oh, what I'm yeah, saying? they get some real. <laughs> yeah, especially man, if I'm coming off of pills, I want to pet something. You know, man. Well, it's just when anytime you know you, we feel that hole, that internal hole, with external anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, man, if you take away what I, what my primary like tool I was using to, to try to fill that hole, even though it was just ultimately making the hole bigger. But if you just if you take that whatever thing I was using, I'm about to find something else. It might be cheeseburgers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It might be gambling. It might be women, you know, yeah. or it might be men, whatever. Yeah, you know? oh, damn, bro. I know I haven't been there yet, <laughs> yeah, but no, me either. Dude, but. you hit me with the wrong eight ball, I'll fucking <laughs> I might meet man. some young fella, bro. I ain't <laughs> meeting no old dude though. That's man. fucked up. Man, I just I don't know. I just never had that inclination. If I was if I was gay, I would just be gay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wouldn't really I mean, I, I can't say that growing up, it might not have been like uh, kind of a tormenting type thing. Growing yeah. up in the rural South, you know, oh, like in the yeah, 80s you had to and be 90s. real secret gay but, back then. But to be honest with you, like being a, a, a white rapper from LaGrange, Georgia, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was some of the same type of like, you know, uh, I won't say oppression, but just ridicule that you faced, you know? I never even thought about that. Yeah. Yeah, I guess people, yeah, people probably really would have like think you're trying to, blacken up or something like that? Well, it was kind of like not really accepted by either side. You know what I'm saying? Because where I grew up, LaGrange, Georgia, shout out to Trap County. But um, it's pretty much 50% black, 50% white. You know what I'm saying? And and so, yeah, definitely the white side wasn't really too, you know what I'm saying, like open-minded to the prospect of me being a rapper at that time. But, you know, the, the hood side, the, the black folks really wasn't too receptive either. It's not like they were just waiting with well, you know, with open arms as far as that. Like, come be a rapper over here. Cause well, you were early in time. I mean, you yeah. were like, a, I mean, you were dang, you were like the dang uh, Neil Armstrong out there. You was like one of the first, <laughs> first man fucking, on the moon. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You was like one of the first wiggers on the moon, kind of in a way. Yeah. You know? No, I mean, as far as like a, you know, a country boy from the south. You know, or did they have that? I don't know. Nah, they didn't have it. No, nah, and that's and that's been part of the journey, like is there was no reference point. You know what I'm saying? Like I grew up off like Outcast. I was heavily influenced by Outcast, Goody Mob, the Dun organized noise, the Dungeon family. So that was the closest thing because they were the first people to kind of like rep Georgia, you know what I'm saying, period, at, specifically Atlanta. But for me, I was I was brought up in the country about sixty miles down the road from Atlanta. Oh, damn! And so yeah, there was and just being a white boy or whatever, there was definitely nobody for me to look at. Even though I did learn from a lot of other white rappers that was successful, starting with the Beastie Boys, you know, going on to like Everlast, House of Pain, even Third Base to some degree. Um, but then Eminem, you know, what I'm saying it was right. Eminem was about a year before me. You know what I'm saying? And when he came, I was like, oh, that's perfection right there, the way that wow. was executed. So, like, but I but I knew, you know, shout out to Vanilla Ice. Um, he's actually my dog. Like, I've, I've done shows with him, and we've, we've had a ball. But yeah, he's a cool cat. <laughs> I've met him a few times. Yeah, he's a good dude, man. And, um, but at that time, there was, like, after his Ice Ice Baby reign, kind of, like, when he sold, like, 15 million albums, which you can't take. Everybody was listening. Everybody was jamming Ice Ice Baby. I don't care what nobody says now. Oh, even Vietnamese you know? were like, you know, Ice Ice Baby, you know? Man, Everybody a, had it. Hey, you know, projects, albums don't sell 15 million. Singles don't sell 30 million or whatever it sold without... Everybody liking that shit, you know what I mean? Dude, everybody liked that <laughs> shit. Everybody got Man. the big pants. When you really hit, when you affect people's, uh, you know, when you go through their ears and yeah. come out their clothing. I mean, I remember so many white boys, Now I wasn't quite old enough to attempt a stunt like this, but I remember white boys getting even, like, the little haircut that he had and shit, yeah. like... And it was just like, dang, man, you were so cool. You got a vanilla ice haircut. You know what I'm saying? But that wasn't really something I was on. But just to keep going, he, there was some kind of discrepancies. Uh, with his story about where he was from and what he was representing as far as being a hood kid or whatever. And so after that, I kind of just learned it was like a lull. It was like a five or six year period where there was nobody was checking for white rappers. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But I, I knew like you just got to represent who you are. You know what I'm saying? Like everything that's in, in the spirit of hip hop and where hip hop comes from and like the principles, you know, the guiding principles are based on like, you know, just truly, truly, accurately, honestly represent who you are, where you come from, and what it was like there and tell your story, honestly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and that's that's going to work. You know what I'm saying? If you do it and you figure out a way to make it dope. And so I, I had developed that within myself. Because, like, my first raps I ever wrote, <laughs> like, in 1992, like, at my mom's kitchen table in the ninth grade were, like, 
was just rolling in the in benzo, letting the bass drop when five motherfuckers rolled by on a drop top. Like, you know, talking about like boys in the hood, like because yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know how to. And that was part of the what you're talking about, like the whole journey of me trying to figure out how within using hip hop is the is the outlet expressing who I was and where I came from, you know, growing up on a farm. You know what I'm saying? In LaGrange, yeah, Georgia, farm, yeah. but some of the animals got gold chains on. Hey, you man, know? I just, I never cared about music. Music was all around me. I had an older brother that loved like metal bands like Iron Maiden. Big shout out to Russ. Iron Maiden's his favorite band, all time band. So he was into that type of music. Then I had my oldest brother, Jay. Shout out to Jay. He liked like uh, Parliament Funk, Camelot, you know what I'm saying? George yeah, Clinton, all I that love kind of P stuff. Funk. Yeah, P Funk. And then my dad likes like, throwback country you know traditional country and my mama just likes to dance you Damn. know what I'm saying so music was all around <laughs> but it just didn't speak to me you know what I'm saying I didn't care about it it was just something in the background but when I heard them somebody say hey we want some put when I heard that I was like what is that yeah. then when I heard boys in the hood when I heard too short I was like what the fuck is this you know you what I'm saying know you had, maybe you didn't even know you had Man, that in you it just spoke I knew it was good when I heard uh, Brass Monkey by the Beastie Boys, oh, like yeah. I heard it and it was just like, man, this is going to be a part of my life forever. I just feel it. It just speaks to me. Like, I don't know the raw e expression, the 808 drum. Like, man, it was a lot to do with that 808, honestly, man, like for real, because that wasn't really a part. The boom bap was kind of like like the New York wave of hip hop. But when the West Coast finally got his turn, it was like too short in WA. Like it, that 808 drum was rattling, you know what I'm saying? So, Dude, I yeah. remember, yeah, when some of that shit came through our neighborhood, because I probably grew up, I didn't grow up country, I just grew up in like a rural kind of right. white area. Right. Because Louisiana doesn't get like a redneck vibe. Louisiana is just, it's a lot of like well, grandchildren, ca like pirates. Vibe, like yeah. further south. You yeah. got Cajun people, you got a lot of mix, kind of like a lot of yellow skin, kind of like light skin, black dudes. You got some kind of like dark. Creole type vibe. Yeah, you yeah. got some people just fucking, you don't know what color. Color they are, bro. Right. You know, they don't even know. Fuck. Nah, Louisiana's a different kind of place now. They I got a lot of pirates, a grandchildren of pirates and shit like that. You know, shout out to uh, old Broadnecks. You know, there's there's a country rapper that's doing his thing right now. That um, he's from Monroe, Louisiana, and he's got, they call him Broadneck. Broadnecks. That's his last oh, name. Broadnecks. Yeah, John. I think it's John Broadnecks or whatever. But he's rep representing Louisiana. And he yeah. got he's got that Louisiana flavor about about the way he does his thing. But it's like kind of country white boy, you know, Louisiana type flavor, which I wouldn't call it like country country like farm type country it's just more like swampy yeah yeah so you so your music so yeah you were just trying to express yourself really yeah and then it was just it's, it's kind of like a puzzle too you're just trying to figure out how to fit the pieces together and make it seem cool ultimately you know what i'm saying because i mean there are some pretty interesting dynamics to to rural life you know what i'm saying that um that maybe some people just aren't typically aware of you know what i'm saying but just how to it's not now I'm not trying to say that violence in a community and all that stuff is 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 cool. It's a terrible thing, but ultimately, if you're representing yourself as a person that made it, persevered, and made it through that, and you and that's your testimony of like, you know, what I'm saying that's cool. Right. You know what I'm saying, and, and it's and it's hard. You know what I'm saying, but basically, I just I was like, well, this is it. You know what I'm saying. I got to just give it what I have to offer. You know what I'm saying, and and I just told the story of. Of, of what I'd been through and what my life had been like. And, you know, it was enough people that related to it for me to be able to oh, keep doing this yeah. for, as a job without having to get a real job for 20 something years. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, dude, everybody. I mean, I fucking, it was crazy, man. When you hit the scene, it was just. It was special, man. It, it really was, was special, man. Did, what was the, some of the pressure of that? Like, because, um, yeah, they just didn't have anything like you. All of a sudden, you're like kind of mixing two worlds. You're probably not like, yeah, maybe some, I could imagine maybe especially where you're from, some white people could see like, oh, this is too, this is too black for us. Yeah. And the hood, the hood, you're never, the, the hood, it fucking, is, you're never hood enough. Even if you, like, yeah. the mm -hmm. hood will always be like, you're never hood enough. You know, it's but like you know, there's real, always that, even in but, the black community. But you at know? the end of the day, when you just are being you, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I, and I never compromised me. You know what yeah. I mean? I really didn't. I never did. There were some things that I might have done that I would have preferred to have highlighted other aspects of, of who I really am. Yeah. But any there's nothing I did that wasn't, you know, a certain shade of like who I am. You know right. what I'm saying? Like truthfully. And so it's kind of like just being at peace. You know, I went through so much when I was younger as far as like trying to really just figure out like because I mean, to say that people didn't support me um, in my my um 
my pursuit of this of rap music, hip hop as a yeah. career would be a pretty big understatement. You know, I would say more like people didn't even kind of like stop chuckling behind my back until I had actually like I was on MTV. You know what I'm saying? So I was well accustomed and, and adjusted to like people not not supporting me, you know, to have to be that 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 self propelling, you know, type deal. You know well, that happens, I think, with a lot of like I remember when I was a comedian, like it was like or until like you somebody sees yeah. you on something, you are just some dude. You are like some guy that don't want to get a real job. And um, everybody just thinks you're full of you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like everybody just thinks at the end of the day, cause you know, I mean <sighs> I'm a creative person, you know what I'm saying? And I, I I played football, and that's like the big deal, like where I grew up, like high school football, you know, it's like the like Friday Night Lights type of deal for sure. You know, I was pretty good at football. My my best friend, Steve Hernan, shout out to him. He was great at football, you know what I'm saying? He was one of the top 100 uh, highest recruited players in the country, went to Georgia, was all SEC, played in the NFL for seven years. Wow. But so I love football. Football is my first love, to be honest with you. And it was interesting because music was actually his first love. And uh, we ended up living vicariously through one another. But um, when I saw how, I was like, man, he, so he's what the deal deal is. And I'm just not quite that. You know what I'm saying? So, man, what can I be great, great at? You know what I'm saying? And I had never bumped my, I bumped my head on the ceiling as far as my potential with football pretty, pretty early. But I was like, man, I just really think I can do the music thing. I just, the first time I ever sat down to write a rap, I was like, man, I just got a knack for this, for just putting words together, making them rhyme, and just being clever. And just, I don't know, I just always, somewhere deep down in my heart, even though I tried to do other things, because it wasn't easy. Like I said, it, there was no acceptance for it. You know, we all crave being accepted, you know what I'm saying, on some level or another by the people around us. And nobody was really, my closest friends, like Big Steve, like he, he believed in me 100%. You know what I'm saying? I'd be up at University of Georgia. I ended up moving up to Athens, uh, Georgia, and being up there, like, you know, freestyling after football games and stuff and, like, all the guys on the team, you know what I'm saying? Just, like, my Andy's what they called me back then. And just, like, Andy, flow for him one time. Flow for him one time. You know what I'm saying? Like, and just all the all those guys being up there and just being like that's before they had iPod. You was the iPod, no doubt. And like I, I as far as battling, like the, everybody would try to go back home and find the best rapper in their little area and get him to come up. Get him. I'll bring his little ass out of the wheelbarrow. He gonna serve your boy. He gonna serve your boy. Oh, yeah, and yeah. then you know what I'm saying it just wasn't happening. You know what I'm saying it just. So I would sit there <laughs> and literally go back and just write and write. You know what I'm saying because I've never been a freestyler because I didn't grow up around other people rapping. You know what I'm saying so. People develop that freestyling ability, I think, when they're in groups of people rapping. But it was a, a long time before I was around other people that were, like, seriously even, you know, rapping, putting words together like that. So when you, like, so how did then you start to take off? How did your career, how did, how did it go from that where you're just kind of rapping and becoming, like, acclaimed amongst people in Georgia, amongst, like, after parties and stuff like that? Before social media, how did you get to that next That's space? That's a good question because I, I always tell people now, like, you know, this era, the way it is, I don't even – I wouldn't know where to start telling somebody how to get on, you know what I'm saying, how to make it happen. You know, just – when people ask me for advice, I'm like, look, just pray that this is what God wants for you if it's what you really want, you know, and, and burn bridges. Like, and I don't mean burn bridges in terms of relationships, but in the pursuit of this thing – if you leave yourself out, and I know you you know this as far as like the comedy thing too. If you leave yourself out, at some point you're gonna take one of them. You know what I'm saying? Because it's yeah. it's tough. You know oh, what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and so I I burnt my some bridges, or as, as Coach of Georgia Kirby Smart would say, burn the boats. You know what I'm saying? Like there was just nowhere for me to go other than this. You know what I'm saying? If if this didn't happen, I I shudder to think. What, what might have been, you know, yeah, what I'm well, saying? at a certain number of years in, especially, it's yeah, like man. once you get up to like 25, 20, people are like, What's going on? You're not in college, you don't have this degree, you don't have a child, you don't have a family. People are like, You better show something, you know. And, and my best friend was like playing football at Georgia, and you know, he was on the way to the NFL. And it was honestly, it hurt me so bad because I loved him so much and was so supportive of him. And I now believe, believe that that was God preparing me, you know, because like I learned how to not be a hater. You know what I'm mm. saying? I, and and a lot of people probably looked at me, definitely looked at me as like a hindrance on him even. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you know, Steve be all right if, you know, if uh, he just get away from old Andy, you know what I'm saying? Like, kind of looked at me as like the loser, but Steve, he never bought into that. He never subscribed to that. You know what I'm saying? He was always like, tell people like, you know, he going to do something big. I don't know when it's going to be or what exactly it's going to be. Maybe this music thing, maybe not, but he going to do something big. 
You know, he always believed in me, never blinked. And then, had you had that kind of belief before in your life? Had you had someone you feel like believe in you that like like that? No, like, um, no, other than him, honestly. I mean, it's not that my my parents and his parents they, they it was love, you know what I'm saying? But it was like it was just so far beyond their realm of comprehension, you know, that it might even be remotely feasible for something like that to happen, especially being a white boy and coming from from down there. But I just always looked at it like this. I always had like this innate feeling like. Hey, I'm just I'm gonna do something special. Mm. I'm special. I'm different. You know, I'm not not in a bad way because I I've never not been humble, but just like, you know, just really feeling like there's just something out there waiting for me that I just gotta find it and pluck it out of the sky or whatever. And um and so I um I just basically like I didn't never think. <clears throat> sometimes I I felt like, you know, it was, it was gonna be something like. Because my, my my fallback plan was being a, a high school history teacher and a, and a high school football coach. Oh damn! I'd love to see you fucking remix. Oh, I, I oh love bro, football, man, I love remix football. the Civil War, dog. <laughs> yeah, I no love doubt. to see that, no bro. Doubt. Fucking get, 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 get. Oh, I got bird, a crazy dog. theory on that too. I'm like, you know, like you know when you have like the feeling. This is a tangential. Yeah, no but worries. I think, go. I think there's it's people listening just because yeah, people right now are stacking shells. They're driving Amazon. Yeah, and they're fucking beating hey. their spouse. They hey, don't know what they, y'all, everybody y'all, y'all rock steady out there. Yeah. But uh, but <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. as far as like, man, I just I feel like in the future, like I think you know how we get that feeling. Like everybody says, like you just know something's in the room with you, or you like hear something crazy or whatever. I've kind of developed a theory on this, and maybe you. I mean, I'd like to hear your your thoughts on it. So I think that in the future, you know, like how in history class now, you know, like we go through books and look at pictures and and listen to speeches or whatever of, of these that mark these certain you know historical events or whatever. I think in the future, the reason that we hear these weird things and like it's like these. I don't know what you would call it, not ghosts, but like some of them probably are mistaken for ghosts. I think in the future. Time travel is actually possible, and people come back and like can actually be present, but it's it's like in a different dimension, so they can like see it, but they're not really present. They're like in danger and actually be on the bat- battlefield at Gettysburg and stuff like that. Oh wow! Yeah, that's that's just something that. So you're saying like in the future you could have like Gettysburg? Yeah, basically people, a whole they, class, a whole field. They're trip just sitting could go. there looking at the battle actually taking place. Damn. But see, they're not the the whole back. Right, the, they don't know that they're they, there. And the whole no, yeah, the people that are fighting the battle don't. But like the whole Back to the Future thing and like about like you know messing it up and all that stuff. That's not that's not a threat because you're like in a different dimension right you know what i'm saying so you're you can observe it but you're not actually present but man i, I really think that's like you through some like secret drywall or something like they don't man, know you're there but yeah you're there. it's just you're in a different some kind of different you know like dude thing. i used to think look i love this shit i used to think that so people had cds and eight tray you know this and that people had uh i always thought that they were going to come out with a dashboard that was like uh, some sort of a screen, right, in, yeah. in, in a vehicle, and you would put, you would just press in whatever you wanted to listen to, and then like uh, Bubba Spark would come and perform on your dashboard like a hologram. Yeah, I always thought that that would be the next thing. Like if you wanted to watch ACDC, you would just type it in, yeah, and then damn, they would come out there and actually you're just driving and they're right I mean, there, you know. It's, I mean, I that's, that's like that. the next step in the evolution of just music videos and like. Streaming period though, you know what I'm saying? It's probably not. It's probably because they have those holograms like a Tupac. I remember that was like that that thing. So I mean, we technology. If you went back a hundred years from from this, like so, if you went back to 1922, oh, you blow somebody's mind. I bro. mean, but like it, it so much more than you would if you went from 1922 to 1822. Right, they wouldn't be that shocked. Right, exactly. Like the world didn't change that much. But They'd be like, that's a wheel, but, bitch. But the, that's just the evidence of the fact that technology is evolving at a much more rapid rate. So imagine a hundred years from now, we can't comprehend it. We literally cannot comprehend it. And so, dude, you know what? Somebody was telling me about comp. I was talking with someone about this, and they had. What were you we talking about? You were talking about a guy with a ladder, and you another guy said, "Hey, we, we could, one day I think we could get to the moon." Yeah. And this dude could only think, "Nah, we can't get to. We can maybe get to the top of a tree or something." Right. 
but I'm not doing a good job of explaining. I, I, anyway, it was something I no, learned. No, but I, 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 don't I, remember I do, shit I do that same good. thing all the time. It's like, like sometimes we movie. can't comprehend yeah. things. That, like it's like we don't have the words for it sometimes. Like, right, and it's beyond our brain to even because we're yeah. still thinking within the limitations, the, the three of, dimensional thing you know, of this the, world. We're thinking of, the, of our limitations. One of the hardest things I ever saw was like the way um, I forget I was watching something. This is probably 10, 15 years ago, but they were explaining the difference because you know mathematics is like proving that there's like nine dimensions. You know what I'm saying? Like we just aren't aware of them or haven't discovered them or, or figured out how to interpret them or, you know, or just see them or be present in them, whatever the case is. But so like, you know, if, if we lived in a two dimensional world, my finger coming at you would just look like a dot. But because it's a three dimensional world, you can see all sides of my finger. You know what I'm saying? But imagine this, if there was some being God, perhaps some people might call it that being, they could do time the same way. Who's to say? You know what I'm saying? Could just oh, look all I see around. what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. like like look all around time. Like you know the the time thing. This this right, right? Because time for us just flows like yeah, this, right? But what they if some dude just, just go all around? Yeah, just be like, okay, this is like looking at it from looking at uh, 2022 from 2014. Okay, now I'm gonna go look at 2022 from 2036. You know what I'm saying? So. I don't, yeah, not, I wonder if there's other realms we're going to crack. Like, yeah. I feel like that has to be the next thing. You would have thing. to believe that's what God would be. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I remember when I was real little, um, you know, I, my, my pops, I wouldn't necessarily call him like an intellectual, but he's he's a pretty smart guy. You know what I'm saying? And he would say, I'd be like trying to get him to explain God to me, you know, like in all these, because I was a very inquisitive kid. And uh, he'd just be like, it's just beyond our realm of comprehension. You know, that would shut me up every time. He's like, you just can't even understand it. It's so, <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, and honestly, like, that's the truth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever it is we're talking about, whatever might be or could be or could, I mean, we could evolve into, it's just hard to, to know. But I was listening to something um, the other day. I watch a lot of YouTube videos. You oh, know yeah. What I mean? I'll go down on YouTube and worm, worm Dude, I love that one her. with you and Randy Aik Aikens. Oh, Atkins. Rodney Atkins. Rodney Atkins, yeah, bro. man. Shout out to Rodney, man. Uh, right, Wreck, right, yeah, right. Yeah, I like Reckon. I like Right, Right. I really, really <laughs> love. Like Reckon. <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. I like Reckon, man. But I really, I really, really did like Right. I don't know yeah. what it was. Nah, that was that was um, a pretty good example. To me, that's that's something I don't normally do as far on the countryside. That's like country music um, with rap on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I do. I feel like I do country hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Really, it should be called hip hop country because hip hop is the first thing that I've, you know what I'm saying? That I'm. Got it. You know, I, I represent all things that I am. I'm white, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever. I'm I'm country, hip hop, but I'm, I'd say I'm hip hop before I'm anything. You know Got what I'm it. saying? Because it's just that the uh, hip hop music and culture has done so much for me. You know, I'm so grateful. It took me all over the world. But, well, it's but, it. Go but on. Just, I just want to complete yeah. land on that thought about, uh, about right. Um, some guys like Big Smo, Colt Ford. I would say those are kind of the like forefathers of that sound. You know what I'm saying? Like where it's really just more like country music, just with some rapping on it, and it's dope. And and that song was is incredible. Shout out to Nora Gordon, uh, who worked worked on writing that song with us. Um, but yeah, and and Rodney, I had just come to Nashville, and that was kind of like the 2012 area of like when Florida Georgia Line was first blowing mm -hmm. up, and the TV show Nashville was on. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh yeah, yeah. And Nashville was kind of like getting that first like, oh, it's like becoming like an international like cool place. You yeah, know it was putting saying? this little skirt on. It, for yeah, everybody. it wasn't just redneck Hollywood anymore. Yeah, and so like, um, you know, and I came up here, and and you know, Rodney. He took a chance on, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't the cool, now like this uh, genre ben bending collaborations. And yeah, and now you got like Morgan Wallen, Lil yeah, Durk, yeah, you got... Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of like, it's it's uh, just like the norm now. Little Nazi, everything's real mixed up now. But back then it was, you know, it was a, actually a, a kind of rolling the dice, you know what I'm saying, with your career to try something like that and to step over that line and... So I'm appreciative of the people that did because, you know, country I always sought to build a bridge between people, you know what I'm saying, between um, hip hop and country, the hood and, you know what I'm saying, because lower class people just aren't that different, you know Dude, what I'm that, saying, like well, that's, that's the bottom a, line. That's the thing I was thinking about next. I always wonder why don't, uh, I feel like why, poor, because as a poor white kid, I, the first thing you wanted to be was black, I felt like. Yeah, I mean, when I well, was a poor white, when I well, I'm not a poor white kid anymore. I'm not a kid. Yeah, and right. I, you know, 
And I hate uh, some of the times I hate having even made any money because I'm not fucking poor anymore. I can't <laughs> I can't have the same feelings I had. Yeah, no, there, there's something know? about that. You know what I'm saying? It, what CeeLo say? He said, I kind of like being poor. At least I know what my friend's here for. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, wow. My mom used to say, she would say, if you don't have anything, they can't take anything away from you, she would say. That's right. And it was kind of like you really be about some shit when right. you ain't got nothing else. You got you know nothing what I'm saying? to like, fucking lose, bro. You, know, you don't care when death don't even seem like that bad of an alternative. Yeah, sue you know me, fuck me, whatever you want to do, man. Yeah. Ain't got no, yeah, nothing's gonna get you. It, it don't matter. But for some reason, yeah, when I, I think I related so much, I feel like to poor black kids when I was young, and I think that it's also just a thing like. We had Miss Pat on. She says she's like black people make things cool. She said, um, and I don't know if I agree about that with well, everything. I Something mean, black, for sure. You know, black folks are creators. I mean, there's you know, there's there's nothing that you could really, if you look at you know, I mean, all that's been created by black folks in America. I mean, it's a lot when it comes to artists. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, well, they got more art kind of built into them. You know, even I feel like if you punch a black dude, a cool sound comes out of them. You know. <laughs> It's like, but I just, I, I, I'm always a little bit fascinated by what it is, even in my own life, why I felt like I related to poor. You, you know what I think, though? I think a lot of times uh, raw creativity comes from poverty and, and oppression, you know what I'm saying? From just the struggle, you know what I'm saying? Like it's. Yeah, maybe I like the or because poor black people always had a. When I was young, they didn't even have any rich black people. They only had like Michael Irvin, I Bill think. Bill Cosby. Or, yeah, Bill Cosby. And maybe like the Dallas Cowboys, it felt yeah. like. And, 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 you know, they probably weren't even that rich. Like, you know, what you would, what we thought was rich at that time, probably we wouldn't. They probably were making like half a million dollars a year or something, you know, or maybe because contracts weren't even that lucrative mm -hmm. back then. You know what I'm saying? No, the producers were making all the money back then. Oh, I mean, yeah. they really had them boxed up. But even like, I remember if they had like, like the best job a black person could get in our town was probably like our teacher, you know. This is like in Baton Rouge. This was in uh, Covington, Louisiana. Yeah. So it's like coaches. Like yeah, stuff. coaches. Yeah. Uh, now you see a lot more. Like I went to the first black doctor. I that, like about maybe seven months ago. I go into the doctor, and the, it was a black. I'd never been. Are you serious? Yeah, and I didn't wow. mean anything, but I know there's black doctors, yeah. but I just had never been yeah. to one, and I'm like. Is this gonna? I just, I was like, and then I'm thinking, black people, their whole life been going to white doctors. What do they right. think about that? Well, you know, I mean, just growing up in like, because you know, this is, is the South is different than the rest of the country. Like, yeah. like there's a, there's a black folks in pretty much every major city. Yeah, the difference in the South and the rest of the country is. You go an hour outside into the country in the South, and it's still a bunch of black folks. You go an hour outside of like. Um, Chicago Minneapolis yeah. You know what I'm saying Or Milwaukee And there's really not Any black folks You know what I'm saying That's a good point So to speak And so I just feel I think like Atlanta Especially like With Atlanta Having spent That's kind of like my That's my home Major city You know what I'm saying I lived in Atlanta For That's where I live now You know what oh, I'm saying Oh it's like February Started a damn city well, Over there well, bro I mean it's just You know and I always Tell people When I bump into like uh, black folks in Idaho or something that just have never been around a lot of other black folks. I say, you need to go live in Atlanta for two years. You know what I'm saying? And go experience a city that's a black city, not just in terms of like the metro population being a lot of black folks, but also the infrastructure. You know what I'm saying? The mayor's black. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The the city council, you know, the the a lot of the policemen, the sheriff, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's that kind of city. And I tell white people in those same areas that, you know, because you ever notice like a lot of those like hate groups and stuff will be like in Idaho and, you know, the, the militias and all that stuff. And I'm like, there are no black. When have you ever been around black people to know you have a problem with them? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you know, but I tell I tell, you know, white folks the same thing. Go live in Atlanta for a couple of years. See what it's like to be for that shoe to be on the other the foot. You know what I'm saying? The other foot. And that you should experience that. You know what I'm saying? Because I think that. That just evolves your perspective to a point where you might be a little more sympathetic and empathetic of somebody. You know what I'm saying? If you really just looked at the world the way they had been forced to see it, you know? Yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I just, I guess I was really just, yeah, I'm just thinking about like why, I, I guess why, I guess maybe it's a lot of music. I wonder what it was that made me relate when I was real young. I was in this you know, I, um, it was hip hop, man. I'm gonna tell you. You know, what I'm saying hip hop. What it was? Hip hop shaped a lot of hearts and changed a lot of um, potentially racist, you know, hearts. Like I would say, like broke that cycle in families in the South. You know, of a lot of because I, I just knew people that 
would otherwise I'd be like, man, that, that joke was racist. But they just love Tupac so much they just couldn't be. You know what I'm saying? And that one thing because they mm-hmm. just love Tupac hypothetically. Right. So much. It just slowly changed their whole perspective on on just black folks in general. You know what I'm well, yeah, you'd have like I always had this vision. You'd have a dude out in his yard just yelling the n word, but then yeah. he closed the door and he's in there fucking moonwalk. Right. You know, and that's like, the MTV generation. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like maybe that is, bro. Because you think about it, like people that grew up in the. That's why these these songwriters here in Nashville, when they write, like every genre is present. You know what I'm saying? They're bringing that tool bag of every genre because because yeah. the MTV generation and and especially now the way streaming is. You know what I'm saying? Because back in you know when you had to like seek out your music. You know what I'm saying? You had to go to the record store and seek out your spe- whatever kind of music your taste, you know, preferred. It was a little different, you know what I'm saying? But then when MTV started playing everything, they'd have those blocks. I don't know if you remember that. They'd have like the blocks where they have hip hop, a hip hop block, a rock block, a R&B block. Yeah, or, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, so if you're just sitting there watching MTV, which during the summertime, you know, that's just what we did as, as kids. You were going to see that NWA video. You were going to see that, you know, uh, Will Smith summertime video. And then you were going to see Nirvana. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and then you might even see some Tim McGraw and some, you know, whatever. Like, so this generation, that generation and moving forward, everybody was just, everything was just that accessible. You know what I'm saying? So everybody has been touched by every genre of music in some kind of way. Yeah. Yeah. And now you start to see, and this is interesting too, you see a lot of black country guys on tiktok i see a lot of it you yeah, know it's no, kind of there's a lot for it's sure. getting kind of wild dude like i'll meet like black, everything is just a lot more mixed i've always had this theory that it's gonna like in three generations everybody gonna be beige yeah well you know? I, I say that same thing man i said we all started the same color i believe you know i mean look i wasn't there i can't personally well what color is a zygote or whatever like well, a baby well when it's i just in think that, that in that part of the world that particular part of the world where the the world was Allegedly, based on what we've been told, born, you mm-hmm. know, um, people look a certain way. And then I think as we migrated to different areas, you know what I'm saying? Like our ancestors migrated to this cold place up here and then had to be in caves for six months out of the year. And, and you know what I'm saying? So over thousands of years of that reduced exposure to the sun, yeah. the skin just got paler. So we would split up. But then now in the last, what, 100, 200 years, everybody's come back together. So, yeah, it's just a matter of time for it. We go back to that same color, you know, which is Yeah, like, you ain't even be able to find anybody to hate, man, at that point. Yeah. You're going to need a chart if you want to be racist, dude. That's why, like, some places you, you, you can't even still, be racist. People still going to hate themselves up there, yeah. because ultimately that's, that's, what, true, that's, what, that's what it oh, boils no. down to, you know what I'm saying? That's a game for me, bro. There ain't nobody out The easiest person for me to hate is my fucking myself, self, bro. And Honestly, I can't hate anybody else unless I hate myself. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't love anybody else unless, unless I, love I love myself, myself so. man. You know, that's just, that's just um, the way it is. So what was, so when you're, you, you're, so you get, so get me to the point where you kind of, your music really takes okay, off. Okay, so man. basically I, I um, moved up to Athens where Big Steve was at mm-hmm. and uh, met Bobby Stamps, who was my manager for 20 years and uh, he introduced me to a guy, he introduced me to Colt Ford and to a guy named Shannon Houchins who owns a label and him and Colt have a label here in town called Average Joe's Entertainment in Nashville and, um, but I started just, it was a roundabout way, but I started just really finding myself in the studio, you know, because I, mm. I was, you know what I'm saying? I, the first time I ever went to a studio, I was uh, working as, a, as an electrician's apprentice, running, running <laughs> oh, conduit, bending pipe, and, uh, and I saved up like $350 over one summer. And the only other guy that I could find that was a rap, you know what I'm saying, that even any inkling of like wanting to be a rapper – Oh, Rodney was his name. He was he was he was a different kind of guy, you know what I'm saying? But uh And what you mean, but, autism or something? No, nah, he was just he was just a different type of cat. I don't I don't really know how to put it. You know, he he didn't come from like a uh he didn't everybody played sports, you know what I'm saying? That was like your biggest badge of honor you could have. And he he wasn't that kind of guy. He was he was really like a kind of like an Eminem type. Like when you hear Eminem talk about like the way he grew up, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like Kind of like that kind of deal, you know, like in the trailer, like the little small mobile home, you know what I'm saying? And and uh, they'd never seen it before, like him, huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say that it was even that rare, but it just wasn't. Most people, 
he was just kind of like the kind of person that was just was invisible he to most people. He was redheaded. Yes, he was. Dude, and he liked black culture? Yes. Bruh, tell me this, bruh. Tell me. You just Why? blew my mind with that. The first... Dude, the first the guy the guy that was always wearing a North Carolina jersey and hanging out with black people was always a redheaded dude, bro. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Don't even tell me it wasn't, bro. Man, every I don't know how wild. it worked out, bro. I don't know how the sun hit him or whatever, but but I kind of I think our generation, at least where I was growing up, like we kind of were the first generation to like just we all kicked it, you know what I'm saying? Because F- football was the most important thing, and yeah, everybody keep people together. You know, and like if you played football, like we only color that, that, that matters is navy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. And so, um, you know, but 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 as far as it, the story of finishing, we saved up. We went to the studio. We get to the studio it, 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 up in Atlanta. It was called Eight Ball Recording Studios. I'll Damn. never forget. So I had my $300. He had his $300. We got like a 12-hour block. Oh, damn, boy. But now, we, does that mean producers are in there with no, you? No, 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 no. Listen, so then we get in there, and he's like, all right, where's y'all's beats? And we're like, huh? Oh. It hadn't even occurred to us that we were going to need beats. And so basically, <laughs> so we you know saved up all this money over a period of months. Too. Oh, I'm like, sure. That's a lot of money at that point. And at he's kind of representing to me like he's, man, I, I know what to do. I know what to do. And then, but we get there and we ain't got no beats and we don't know how to make no beats. But the guy was actually cool enough to sit there and kind of like allow us to like, he basically made some garbage beat, but, you know, like... Held our hands yeah. there when we felt like we were doing it or something. And we recorded two songs. One was called Nothing But Game, Theo. Oh, dang. It ain't nothing but game coming out my mouth, player, player. Oh, it was like the rap was like, right quick, I'm bringing tight shit for these jealous marks to jock, belling through the parking lot when my partner sparked the chop. Now I'm feeling kind of strange, like my state of mind done changed. Off that hurricane and dank, I'm starting to think that I'm deranged. Dang, like, bro. Type shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's how to make you feel good, though. <laughs> oh, huh? man. It was, the, the, it was terrible, man. Like, it really was, but I was so <laughs> proud. I mean, I had something recorded on a cassette tape, and we could ride around Damn, and listen to bro. it. I, I can feel it right Man, now. I'm you walk you, out of here, you're like, we fucking but, got but, something. But, but the people, when I got to Athens. What that trick? <laughs> oh, man, it was just that. It wasn't that good. Like, no, it wasn't <laughs> near that good. It was that one uh, Oscar. <laughs> but um, basically, like, I just felt like. Man, this is it. Like I'm, I felt like I had already made it. Basically, you know what I'm saying. Even though I'm still working three jobs, selling mid grade weed, like, but I'm like, dang man, like this is it. You know what I'm saying? Like, girls come around. Yeah, I'm a rapper. What do you mean? Yeah. Oh, I play you my song. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got a business card now. Oh man, don't let me like steal like a a, a laminate from like a tour or something like so so dead because <laughs> Fat Shan, the producer that I ended up working with in Athens, and and uh, all those guys, Bobby and Colt, were close to Jermaine Dupri. They worked with Jermaine Dupri, and they had like all these stuff jackets and stuff that said so so deaf on it so anytime i could like i would try to get that jacket for a night and go just post up and be like, oh this whole thing what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> and so um just flexing you know what i mean it's yeah. like feeling like i kind of like manifested certain things by like i would tell girls you know the, the dungeon family is a big a very important um um, what's the word? I mean, a musical family in Atlanta that consists of Outkast, Goody Mob, like a know. dynasty or something. I mean, just the just they're the forefathers, they're the pillars of in okay. in my view of of hip hop in Atlanta. Um, as far as representing Atlanta for real, for real, um, in a in an accurate way. Um, but I used to tell girls that I was the the white member of the Dungeon family, Damn. like. Five years before, like the accountant or whatever. No, like no, I was the white oh, rapper. Okay. Yeah, like like in and like there was it was said, um, and I think it probably was said by Rico um, from Organized Noise, who was kind of the the um, the dungeon was his mother's basement. You know what I'm saying? Okay, his got mother's it. house. So he was kind of the pat- patriarch. Is that a good way to put it? Yeah, the Airbnb but, owner. Yeah, for sure. And um. And so I'd heard that he said white folks shouldn't be participating in hip hop or something like that. But I was always like, well, he going to love me. He going to love me because I'm I'm re- I'm for real. Like, I'm real with my shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm representing who I am, you know, and some Georgia shit the right way. He going to love me. Watch this. That's what I would tell, like, my friends. But I would tell girls that, yeah, I'm I'm in the Dungeon family. What Damn. do you mean? Like, way before I could, it could have even been anything remotely, you know, resembling reality. 
And I'd be damned if I ain't become a white boy in the dungeon family. You Manifested know what I'm saying? Ultimately. almost. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So that's I guess that's what I get from fake it till you make it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um and you know, me and Rico, that's my brother. You know what I'm saying? The guy that allegedly has said that. I mean, he's he's as close to anybody to me as anybody I've met in, in the music business, period. So man, it's just crazy how life can unfold. You know, if you but I but I had so much faith back then, man. Really? So you had faith in you mean in God? You mean I mean in God, but in but in God's plan for me, um, just didn't that God had a plan for me? You know what I'm saying? Uh, to to do something that was going to impact the world, and that you know that I, I just always felt like I had a spirit, man. That that you know I I want to be an extension of whatever that that ultimate love, you know, love based energy or spirit it, that God is. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I always just felt like an extension of that because. You know, I, I like to to be a purveyor of of love and light, so to speak. You know, so, and I just felt like there was some plan where I was going like just have an impact on the world in some kind of way. You know, based on that, and um, you know, in some ways it's worked out exactly how I could have drawn it up, and then in some ways not. You know what I'm saying? But it's been a hell of a journey. You know what I'm saying? And I still do not for one second question God's you know, like involvement in the whole thing. You yeah. Know, so that's just me. You know what I'm saying? It, p- people can are welcome to believe anything they want, you know, and all of our experiences and our, our uh, upbringing, you know, and in our experiences as, as adults, everything shapes us. You know what I'm saying? Our DNA, you know, is a part of that too. But I just, um, I just believe what I, what I believe. And I, it's something that I, that I feel and it, it can't be quantified in words or, you know, it's just beyond us. But I know, when I'm being creative, Theo, like when I'm writing, when I really get in that zone, yeah. I, there's nothing I can ever do to feel closer to God or, you know, to to just that that energy source, that love. You know what I'm saying? Like I just feel it. It's like I'm in such harmony in the way time can just disappear. It's like I'm doing what I was put here to do. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, and whatever, whoever created me is pleased at this mm. time. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And then it's like I feel some uh, it, like internal um, turmoil at times too. And it's like I'm not I'm not uh, doing what I was put here to do. And and uh, that that spirit's not pleased. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I can feel that too. Not abandoned <clears throat> though. You know, just right. Do you um? Where were we at with it, man? I I, I got it's a okay. terrible, terrible like um. This is like the third podcast I've done. And uh, landing things, you know what I'm saying? It's like I, I love talking about every aspect of my story, but I'm definitely trying to work on landing shit. <laughs> I think you've done a nice job. There's a couple times you were like, well, let's finish this point before we go on to something else. Yeah. Because I, I, I sometimes kind of forget what's – I don't forget what's going on, but it's hard for me to, like, uh, remember and be thinking at the same time. No shit. Um, well put. So – But to go back to the – so at the studio, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So we get – that that song the, right you and my fucking songs. boy are in there yeah yeah and he was because look dude i'm telling you this the first time they had a white dude that wanted to be black in our area bro they never seen it before they put him in special ed bro wow you hear that man that's crazy they put him in special fucking ed bro shout out brian purvis dog praise god BP, bro. Boy. oh he's still he just got locked up for something Bring him up. Bless that boy. Free that man. Free BP. I don't know, bro. Y'all don't know what he did. Yeah, I don't know what he did. I don't know what he did. That's true. I had social studies with him, and he fucking he was. But he done been on a hell of a journey, though. Oh, this dude, he been through it all. He took those bullets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he really something happened to him. Yeah. Uh, P U, yeah, there you go. Bring him up, gang. That'd be right there. What BP do? What he do? Attempted murder. That's hypothetical. Yeah. Attempted. You know. uh, we ain't paying the four dollars to find out. That's it, B. Happy Hanukkah. Yeah, that's all we got for you, bro. <laughs> but uh, stay hey, well, baby. Yeah, man. But hey. they put him in there, dog. You can't be good. Be good at it. They put him in there, man. Damn. Yeah. But so, you knew him pretty well, y'all. Was, was y'all cool or was we it, were cool for a while? He was hard to really get close to, man. He just he had that rattle, rattle in wasn't him. He? he had that fucking rattle in him, bro. You could yeah. tell he never slept. Damn. He like probably he didn't no slept. drugs. Just no drugs. Oh, bro, he had drugs built into his think, fucking I think, I, in his I think neck. we know that now as mental illness. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah. But back then it was just damn. Yeah, all right. just this boy, just you know, he's yeah. lit. He was but, early. He was just. He looked like he fucking was early and late at the same time, bro. Damn. 
He would just, you know, his eyes never shut. He looked like he didn't sleep, man. He maybe slept twice. Who knows what he twice. went through, man? Who knows what oh, his home yeah. life was like that made it oh, where he it was, just, I'm sure it wasn't where he stayed good, that man. wired. You know what I'm saying? Like, I always, I, I, this good. is something I think about now, and, and I'm sure you got some insight and a perspective on this, too. What if we went back through history, Theo, and looked at every violent crime, every murder, every even rape that's ever been committed in the history of planet Earth going back? I wonder what percentage of those violent crimes were committed by people that had they had and you know a, a thorough psychiatric evaluation, or mentally it was a mental illness. You know what I'm saying? It was something that you know at, at the time just obviously there was no there was nothing. When did, did mental illness, mental health, even become a thing? Like last fifty years, like, yeah. And it's it's even been like a like a slow and you know jagged like ascent to where we are now, which. But but I'm just I, I thought oh, about yeah. that like if we you know there's there's just something to be said for that though that like hurt people hurt people you oh, know hundred percent man know? well they just had a guy on Joe Rogan this guy Gabber Mate Gabber Mate and he is like a, um I want to say he's a psychiatrist but he's like a really good thinker some people are real good at thinking. And he talks a lot about trauma, and trauma is kind of a buzzword that people use a lot now. But one thing that right. that he was like saying resonates. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That really resonates. Yeah, with me. yeah. That really resonates, That's a buzzword, bro. Yeah. yeah, that fucking resonates, bro. Raising nets, bro. <laughs> yeah. So close. Raising eights. Um, but he was saying how like tr like that like pain and stuff can be transferred through DNA. I, and I, maybe some of that's believable or not, but it can definitely be transferred through the way that you treat people and the the new things that have, like the way that you, it's so crazy how many times something happens to somebody when they're a child and then the same, they yeah. do the exact same no. thing. They do the exact same thing. Uh, and it's, it's interesting, man. It, it is. is. And it's just a lot of like, uh, we're just now getting to the point too, where we have so much reflection of ourselves because of. Um, that's a good and bad thing <laughs> right it's a good and bad thing but it's like we have such a recording of how people operate and behave now that you're able to see a lot of like okay and compare it you know right um and just document it so i think it's like we're getting to a point where it's like we're really documenting how much pain has been like just in the in the damn gene man. pool of of humanity and uh, That's crazy, man. and it makes you wonder, kind of, what the future will be like. Will we will we be able to solve that kind of thing, or we will just be able to continue to just? Because I don't think we we are more aware of like of just you know mental illnesses, and but I don't necessarily think that we've really figured out the best ways to treat them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying to to give somebody you know because it's like you know I've been on um, on meds before you know at different times and. And uh, it's like, okay, I don't feel that way anymore, but now I feel this way, which is equally terrible, or it affects, you know, some other aspect of my being that just makes it either worse for me ultimately, or at at best, like just a trade off. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, I just when treating everything with with chemical with man made medicine, you know, what right? I'm it might not be the way. Yeah, and, it might not be. You know, and what we saying? might look in in. A, in Thirty years, you might look back and be like, "Okay, we took a real bad turn right. as a society with trying like, like that." Back in the eight, late eighteen hundreds, when they were like drilling, you know, Dang, screws in bro. people's, you know, in the at your temples, and they would like just kill that frontal lobe. That's how they would make people like chill out. Yeah, that, like, think that about was, that. That's that was one hundred and twenty-five years ago, and then you had to pay for that dude to come over. Yeah, you're, and your family's there. Like, how did that work? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Literally, you're just like. Yeah, dude. Damn, you just Man, that's like, crazy. You know, <laughs> damn, you got birds laying on a little nail in your head. Man, and this is insane, dude. Your cousin come and hang his hat on that, yeah, on that I mean, little just, fucking spike. You're just like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. for like sixty years, like it's crazy, man. Like, did they? Like, who came up with that? Like. They should have done. I hope that that was what that person at some point in their life. I hope <laughs> whoever thought of that first and started doing that. I hope they had to experience it. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. Um, and they were also saying on that episode just about how people take care of their children and stuff like that. Like it, um, 
just that there's not enough connection between families and stuff these days. People used to be in tribes. A lot of that has been talked about in the past 10 years about how people used to be in tribes and right. we were closer. So not only did your mother see you, but your aunt saw you. Your grandmother was right there. There was constant like um, attention and evaluation of right. what was going on with you and that uh, that they think people developed the healthier then. I don't know if that's true, but it's just like a, it was a theory that that man was talking about. You know, I just, I think that this, the gap between human beings, period, is just getting wider and wider. That is weird. You know what I mean? And, and we were talking about it last night, like social media, you know, it's designed to bring us all closer together, but ultimately it creates such polarized, you know, like views of things, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, social media is probably as much to blame as anything for the way our country has. It's always been these two uh, drastically different choices that we had when it came to political stuff. You know what I'm saying? And and I just want to say for the record, fuck both of them. Yeah. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like because that's just not that just doesn't make good sense to me. Like our two choices are these two radically different like like viewpoints and it's just crazy but like social media has driven that wedge it just made it that much wider that gap you know what i'm saying it's, yeah it, it's it definitely led to a lot more people don't seek information they seek affirmation you know what i'm saying so they follow things that they know are going to continue to feed them the same thing they've been on you know what i'm saying and, and sometimes i think each side is right you know at different times i think the sensible compromise of the middle is kind of it just makes a little too much sense to me. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes, you know, this way of thinking is going to be the best way to go about it. And then sometimes this way of thinking is going to uh, be the best way to go about it. But, you know, you'll have like these 280 character or less, like, um, you know, just what do you call it? Hot takes basically like of just saying something or reporting a certain event in a certain way that's going to reaffirm to that group of people that, yep, see? I was you, right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. This is it. Exactly. And so, and then they, it's like the um whole, the old adage, um, a lie can, will travel around the world before the truth has a chance to put its pants on or whatever. Mm. I butchered it, but yeah, something like that. But I understand it, yeah. Yeah, people share stuff, you know what I'm saying? And next thing you know, it's just, it spreads so, like well, We used to play fire. that game, the telephone game. Remember when you was kids, we'd play the telephone game. Oh, bro. yeah, like sit there and te whisper and tell this person, yeah. this person. And then by the time it got to the end, it was so Somebody deep. lied. Oh, we had one kid, bro. <laughs> this is kind of fucked up, but he would just yell. the. It, when it came back to him, he would just say was the N-word every time, bro. <laughs> what? This motherfucker. Yeah, he was just, I don't even think he was, I think he was just mentally unwell, you know, but because yeah, he man. would be like, you know. that shit was funny. It was, oh, no, something was wrong with him. <laughs> oh, okay. But he, uh, it would be like hurricane and it would break around and every yeah. time and the teacher would fucking but he just knew that word man he knew it like got a reaction probably yeah like, I think he might have had uh, he didn't understand it but like he might he also talked about like e Egypt and the pharaohs a lot he might have had um, mental disability right but um so take me through so you so the music is popping things get going I, I apologize I like to talk about a, a variety of shit no this is great <laughs> yeah, bro but, this is what but, it is this is but, the but conversation I, do, I don't want to de-emphasize you know the fact that that I've had an incredible journey you know through music but um so yeah so then I'm in Athens at that point I'm starting to make some connections and we ended up putting out uh, um my first album my first major release on Beat Club Timberland's record label with the, the first the single Ugly was on this album yeah. um we put we put out an independent version of that album by the same name about two years before the major label version came so out. So that's what people started hearing. Yeah, uh, so it, it started spreading around Georgia, and it was like people always talk about marketing plans. You know what I'm saying? And like, like we got to come up with the perfect. You no, know, when something's the shit, shit, it's, good. it's just word of mouth is the marketing plan, yeah. and it was that kind of deal. You know, and I'm I'm just blessed to have been a part of it, and to you know to have had that clarity at that particular point in time to be able to do something that, that people fuck with to that degree. But literally, like, one person, two people, two people, four people, four people, eight people, and so on and so on and so on. And, yeah, so pretty soon. And there was a, there was a lot of other, like, you know, um, uh, interesting details, tidbits of information to the story, but short story long. Um, basically, we signed with Interscope Records. You know, Jimmy Iovine, the same after... In 1999, when I first saw Hi, my name is, I was destroyed. Why? Because you thought he beat you to the punch? I, th I thought at that time, as a white rapper, you pretty much felt like, I ain't going to be with one more. 
Like if they ever, if uh, if one ever gets back in the door, it's just gonna be one. And then it's like I saw that and I was like, well, Damn. he did it perfect. Oh. You know what I'm saying? And I remember my best friend, Big Steve, and I was just all depressed. And he came and he was like, man, I think you got it fucked up, man. He's like, yeah, he that's some awesome shit. He said, but you Southern, you're you, it's, it's different. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you still straight, you know what I'm saying? You still got your lane. I was like, keep it coming, keep it coming. All right, you know what I'm saying? And then I got back up, you know, eventually and, and got back to work. And two years later, I was signed to the same label as, as him. Wow. Yeah. Did you ever get to meet him? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I, um, I met him at the uh, anger management tour in 2003. It's a crazy experience. I thought you were going to say anger management meetings. That's what I thought you were going to uh, say, nah, too. Oh, no, no, no. I've been to you some know, of them. I, you know, he was, uh, I don't know, he was, he was a little... He was on the private plane like level, you know what I'm saying? When I was yeah. when I was still flying commercial, you know, or I'm still flying commercial, but when I was definitely getting on up there in first class and all that. But you know, he he jumped very quickly to private plane level, you know what I'm saying? Where he was just moving at his own pace. But but um we met, man, and he he was he was very complimentary. You know what I'm saying? It was a, probably the only time I've ever been starstruck in my life when I'm when I met Eminem. It was just like wow. That's really it. That's the real Eminem right there. You that's know what I'm saying? Crazy. And uh, but man, he was extremely complimentary, you know, of me. And he always has been. Um, even when uh there was a diss song where he dissed me and Paul, Paul Wall, that leaked. And even in the diss, he was com- I I feel like he was complimentary of me, you know what I'm saying? Like he was and he was actually, I don't know where the information that he uh but it was it was wrong the wrong drug he said I was on or whatever you know what I'm saying oh yeah I hate that when people get your drugs wrong. yeah man it's like come on man like <laughs> yeah, no, let man. he who is without sin cast the first stone you know <laughs> but um, it is what it is you know Paul Rosenberg his manager was always uh, super cool to me and the whole Shady Records staff I never have had a chance to get close to Eminem like that as far as building like a super you know close personal relationship but. Man, I, he would ask people about me. You know what I'm saying? Any, anytime he s- would see somebody that, like, he knew fucked with me, he would be like, how's Bubba doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, a right. couple times. So, you know, I, I got a number of respect for him, man. Love and respect. Um, And uh, so, but to, to, <clears throat> to go on back, so I was signed to Interscope Records for about nine months. And after having so much success, Jimmy Iovine, shout out to Jimmy Iovine, just an absolute iconic figure in music and yeah and entertainment period and uh that man believed in me a great deal um i still don't even necessarily understand what you know what it was about me that made him believe in me so much um but he did you know what i'm saying and he's he's a genius you know type of type of human being so that always gave me confidence just to know that, like, man, the baddest motherfucker in this this whole business. I saw something in me. Yeah, like, not, he believes in me <clears throat> to the point where he's going to push the maximum, the biggest button that Interscope Records, the number one label in music, you know, could push. You know what I'm saying? $6 million spent on me in marketing. People mm-hmm. know the name Bubba Sparks. You know what I'm saying? And, it's, and, um, and so, but he, after the Eminem and Dre success... He kind of was like, I might be on to something with this whole get, you know, the black producer, white boy, give him credibility, you know, off top. And so he tried a couple of other routes, you know what I'm saying, as far as hooking me up with people and, and there was the chemistry just wasn't there. And then and then finally he he asked me one night, he called me and he was like, I'm about to meet with Timberland. He's like, What do you think about that? I was like, Oh, that'd be perfect, dude. I was like, that'd be, that's it. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Next morning, I was on a flight out to L.A., and the rest was history. And I was the first artist uh, released that Timberland, as far as it being his record label and him releasing the artist, I was yeah, the first. You, yeah, you was the first one. one. I was the first artist he ever the released. The first one yeah. overall, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And so what was your personal life like at, at that point? Because life gets crazy, bro, when you Man, start getting I just, where— I was a young country <clears throat> motherfucker with millions of dollars and— <laughs> pretty much whatever you could in a in a uh a budding a spawning drug addict and you know what I'm saying and and just a kid man that that just you know I I just loved life at that time though you know what I'm saying we were just were you happy I mean were you stoked were you just I, living the, it up? at that time man on that first album you damn right I was yeah you know I was really happy man I was going to London and just 
Damn, Man, and everything was so like, you know, performing on Saturday Night Live, man. You know what I'm saying? Derek Jeter's the host. You know what I'm saying? Me and Shakira wow. are the musical guests. Okay. You know, and, and I'm I'm in the uh, green room before I perform on Saturday Night Live, and they knock on the doors about 15 minutes before I go on. They're like, um, Mr. Sparks, um, there are two guests here that would just like to say hello. If you, if, if, if you, um, if they're interrupting you or disturbing you, it's fine. They can come back later. But if they could just say hello, it was Chris Rock and Jamie Foxx. Nah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just kicking it like, you know, and I'm just like, cut your ass boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just like, Dang. what's up, man? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. No other way to be. You know what I'm saying? It's right. like, I, and like I said, I didn't have a reference point of another example of, of somebody like me, you know, to show me how to act a different way other than just being me. Like, I just, and it's like sometimes it's just because I, for lack of a uh, understanding of any other way I could possibly act or be, I would just, fuck it, I'm just going to be me again. I'm going to keep being me and keep being me. Yeah, and sometimes it served that. me well. Sometimes it, it it was fucked up. But Well, there's a lot of parts in, in, in inside of you, obviously. No you doubt. Know? No um, doubt. So those are so that's really the highs, man. Yeah, that was. Did y'all perform on VMAs and stuff like that? I never performed on the VMAs. I um, like um, I went to several VMAs. Like, did you go to the one with In Sync at it when Eminem came I out you, with I all the you, different? No, little, no, uh, that was that. I, I came to into the game the year after that one. Dang. I tell you, when I came into the game, I was sitting right here at my first VMAs mm -hmm. when Alicia Keys was at the VMAs playing "Fallen," beautiful, "Falling" on the uh, on the piano. And I remember just being like, uh, I can't help falling. Mm -hmm. Is that one? In yeah. Love uh, with you. Oh, man. Dude, and I, I was just like, I'm here. I'm in this bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you know Dude, I remember I sat, it was right after Chris Farley died. I sat behind his brothers and I sat man, by God Tim. bless the dead, man. Chris Farley, that was my guy. I sat by Shawshank Redemption, the guy, <laughs> the prisoner. And which, one is, uh, which prison? Like Tim Robbins? Tim Robbins, yeah. What was his name in the movie? Christopher. No, that's Christopher Robbins I'm thinking of. I was, don't know, bro. Anyway, Who was it? That was a great movie, though. That anyway. was crazy. And I fell asleep when NSYNC was performed, bro. I fucking fell asleep in my seat, bro. But Nelly came by and he fucking dapped me up when he came by. That was pretty cool. <laughs> you fell asleep. Said I was a highlight then. That's this is true. the craziest, bro. That's hard. Afterwards, I got invited to a threesome with these ladies, and one of them gave me some cocaine, and I got all fucking scared because I never done. Is that any the story cocaine. you told on uh, on uh, it was Joe Rogan or something? I, I watched where you were talking about like the time you were like in New York. Now you were supposed to do something the next morning. Oh, that was with Daryl Strawberry. Yes, you were oh. interviewing Daryl Strawberry. Man, that was a tough that night, sucks, man. man. Well, just the, I know that feeling. The fun part is fun, but the unfun part ain't fun. That inside man. out feeling and just knowing that you're up functioning at about 36%. <laughs> oh, I'd get so much anxiety. But I was at this threesome, but I wanted to remember yeah. it. So they had a bag of little sex toys in there. So I copped uh -huh. one of them on the way out, right? I snuck one. And I put it in like my belt, kind of, you know. <laughs> so then I was in New York City. I went to like a little key, b bodega to get a, some snack or something, a little uh, coconut water. They had just come right. out with coconut water, and I tried it. And uh, oh, and a little, I think I got a little thing of donuts or something. But while I was in there, that little sex toy thing fell out on the floor <laughs> in there, bro. And, dude, it was like a migrant family, There's no you know. shit back up in the bull now. Oh, bro. It was a <laughs> Vietnamese family owned it or something, you know. And they had a little kid in there, bro, and he fucking brought it over to me. He didn't know what it was, man. He just thought it was a toy. Oh, and I just... It was shit. a toy, but it was. It just broke my. The whole shit was just bad. But anyway, oh, man. man um, <laughs> so when? So so you and I talked to like about like when did you start to realize that you feel like you had like a some addiction issue? I was well, you know, I pretty much just kind of like partied. You know what I'm saying? It's like then I was in a snowmobile accident, ice fishing in Canada. It was like you know real fucked up, and I got prescribed like a. Uh, I mean, I had dabbled with like you know popping a lower tab or something you know not to mention specific drugs but you know what i'm saying the, no it's fine man okay, i took cool. some somas one time and i <laughs> drove into a driveway and there wasn't a driveway hey them somas ain't no joke boy flex are real in summer dude and my buddy this gay fella r.i.p billy conforto he was like one of the first gay prize fighters in america what is this this is celsius something if you got you see what the thing hitting on um and I thought, Tasty I don't know beverage. if he tried to take advantage of me or what, but whatever. Anyway, bro, but what, uh, 
Yeah, so when do you start to know that you had an a issue? Um, I was on tour with uh, Blink-182. Shout out to what Trav, Travis Parker. And um, I had been prescribed Percocets for about six months, and uh, then they just cut them cold turkey. And you know, I knew nothing about addiction or, you know, or – uh, physical dependence or withdrawals, dope scene. I, I knew nothing about shit. Then um, shit about shit. I knew shit about shit. Um, and I had run out, and I just think I'm just done with that. You know what I'm saying? And, and I remember I had this um, this uh, process. You know what I'm saying? I would the bus would get into wherever we were going like that morning, and I would go in the hotel and I would sleep till like three o'clock. I would get up slowly you know what i'm saying i take a shower and stuff and then before i would leave the hotel at like five o'clock i would take like i think i would take two p- pills and then like four shots of patron and that would get me like in the go be me in public and you know start angling towards showtime you know and i remember i didn't obviously didn't have the pills and i laid down trying to go to sleep like normal 30 minutes later, I wake up sweating, just like oh, feeling inside out. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm sick. This is crazy. Like, like I think I'm just sick, like cold or flu or something. And I'm like, oh, man. And I try to lay back down. I t- maybe take some cold medicine, lay back down. Can't can't sleep. And I'm like, man, what is wrong? It's, it's a unique feeling. This is like a – I've never felt this exact type of thing before. And then it hit me. Damn, it's because I ain't got no pills. Damn, am I addicted to these things? Like what? And I remember I talked to somebody, like probably my manager or somebody, and was like, "You think I'm addicted to them?" He's like, "I don't know, maybe so." You know, he's like, "Were you taking more of them than you were supposed to?" And I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> I mean, <you> know, <laughs> of course." <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just like, you know, I don't, I don't know. I just it was just a, a foreign concept to me. You know, it's just that was definitely one of those things. Like I had known some. Some addicts, you know what I'm saying? Some drunks, a lot of drunks, you oh, know what yeah. I'm saying? But that's all they used to call them, really. Yeah, right. And um, but I, for me, I just never. Nobody ever thinks it's gonna. It could happen to them until it does. But I just remember being like, "Damn, I'm addicted to these motherfuckers." But I was moving so fast. I said, "You know what? When I get to a stopping point, you know, a resting like area, I'll take care of it and get on off of them." But for now, I just need to buy them in, on the street. You know what I'm saying? So I started buying them on the street real heavy. My boy Trey, Chunky Trey, shout out to Chunky Trey. He's like seven years sober now or some shit. Gang, gang. Big Steve's uh, 15 years sober. Wow. I'm a, you know, I'm the only uh, dipshit that just hadn't been able to, you know, find that willingness or whatever, like to, you know, I'm, I'm a thinker. You know what I'm saying? That can oh, be, yeah. That can be a big fucking uh, hindrance to to recovery. When you're creative, you create a lot of ways you can figure yeah, shit out buddy, yourself, buddy. That's the same. I got. I just got like. I think I'm like one, maybe 150 days, maybe. Yeah, I remember talking to you. Uh, we were both but like at the same time. We're on the it's the same journey. I don't know yeah. if I'll have you know these days forever. We'll see. Well, man, um, but um, just to, to so people, so you started having to get them like yeah, behind the scenes. Yeah, so I was buying them on the street and uh. Short story long, I, that was like in 2004, I think, and um, and then I ended up finally going to rehab, like pretty much at the peak of Miss New Booty, you know what I'm saying, of that, I did not enjoy that, you know, you were asking did I enjoy the, the when I first came into the game, the Ugly, uh, when Ugly was my first number, first ever release as far as a single and, and my first number one record, and um, and that was a great time. But the Miss New Booty time, man, it was just trying to be in places, traveling around, running out of pills, just having to white knuckle it, be, oh. be tough, you know what I'm saying? Like, and get through, you know, just big shit, you know what I mean? And things that I should have, you know, I should have been enjoying, you know what I'm saying? It was a huge record, you know, and just so many blessings came from it, you know, but my my uh, perception at that time was was really fucked, you know what I'm saying? But I remember I had like half a million dollars worth of shows um, over like a two-month period. And I told my manager, Bobby, I was like, man, I got to go. You know what I'm saying? I said, I'm, I, I can't do it anymore, man. I said, I'm about to get on, about to check out of here or something. I don't know what's 
And um, like, and how I, was it? Did it get pretty like? Because I've had, like, I've got, I've had some times. I probably went to some strange, you know. I've been in some strange you know places what, what trying it was, to get some cocaine. You know what it was for me? I, I, getting chumped by people. Like, meaning, like, I got the number one song in the world at this time, and these motherfuckers got me sitting in this bowling alley for six hours. Yeah. And it just, I couldn't take it anymore. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, man, I can't be a punk-ass motherfucker but so long. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just the way I'm... The way my account is set up. Oh, I want to do what I... That's hilarious, the way my account is set up. I want to do what I want to do, man. That's all, all... I've always been that way. But Have you always been that way? especially just to know that somebody... That they on the phone laughing to their homeboys, talking oh. about, man, I got... But, 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 man, I got him sitting up here at this bowling alley. Man, this shit crazy. You know, that kind of shit. And I'm just like... You mean waiting for drugs? You yeah, mean? I'm just sitting yeah. there like... They're like, give you the money. And then they they're gonna ride up whatever, and it's, I'm sitting there for six hours on a Saturday and probably missing some shit that I'm supposed to be, you know what I mean? And just, just I, you know, I just couldn't, I, I couldn't do it anymore. You know what I'm saying? And then just tired of being dope sick, man. Like, you know, that was that was the deal at that time. You know what I'm saying? It was the opiates? You know what I'm saying? And you know, I, I I don't go down the same street. You know what I'm saying? Like like um multiple times very often, you know what I'm saying, yeah. as far as that goes. But I I would have never, at that time, I could have never seen there being a day, a uh, six-hour period where I didn't use, like, wow. some type of opiate at that time. And I thought I, I would never be able to get beyond that, you know. And I and I did, you know. And I, and I, Suboxone's a part of my journey, you know what I'm saying. I can say that's the only – Way I was able to to stop and uh, and stay stopped as far as and people say like you just traded one addiction for another yes and no because the difference is if I'm out here taking uh, Roxy's and Oxycontin and, and whatever else especially this fentanyl world that that's this this uh this going down out here now that's that's a whole different level but um but when you take Suboxone you could take four milligrams a day. This is just my experience now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the judge, jury, and executioner on, on anything. You know what I'm saying? My opinion in 250 will get you Coca-Cola. But Man, you uh, sound like Riff Raff, bro. <laughs> Y'all got some of the same thing, man. It's real interesting. Man, you know, I ain't never met Riff Raff, man, but I, I, I know I've... I know we, it's just certain people you just know you fuck with them. You know what I'm saying? He's a special guy, man. He's cool. He's he uh, real creative, too. Nah, man. And I he's seen him do that shit he did with the tennis racket that time, man. Some of the most unbelievable shit i ever seen, man. He's a deep dude. And we got a, several mutual, you know. But anyway, so, um, but, you know, your tolerance doesn't go up on the Suboxone. You can take the same amount, and it's never going to, your tolerance is never going to, like, you know, force you to take more. Where, whereas, you know, when, when you're taking the other stuff, like, your tolerance is you just, just going to slowly build and build. I've always wanted to do methadone. I've never done it. Yeah, I, I I've taken some methadone, but I, not as like a solution, but just as a that's all you got. <laughs> <laughs> but um um, but yeah. So and um, but did you think so? I, a lot of times, like I I've been in and out of the program for maybe six years, right? Six years. I've been so, in and out since two thousand seven. So what's that? Fifteen. And I never thought I had this problem. I thought everything was pretty normal in my life, you know. And it came on really later in my, you know, I thought for me. But when people came in with opiate addiction, I always thought, to me, it seemed like you had people that were real alcoholics that were in there. But then some people just got so, like somebody goes in because they hurt their back. That's not a person that's, and then they get, I mean, people were getting so addicted to But opiates. your mind doesn't know the difference is the thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's just like, I know people, my old sponsor, shout out to Stephen K down on the Grange, but he, uh. He was like, I ain't taking nothing. He said, I don't care what happens to me. I ain't taking no pain medication. He said, Cause my brain's not going to know the difference. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That shit gets in my system. It's going to do what it does. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of the reason, being righteous or, or you know, it being prescribed by a doctor or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? He was they like, feel like they made a cheat code when they made uh, opiates, though. When they made, like, some of these opiates, it feels like the these companies, I mean, it's like they – Made so many more people addicts that were. Oh man, you can't tell me it was, and I, you know, I could break it down even, even on a more freakier level, man. It's just like it's very interesting to me that two thousand up to say two thousand eight, they were pain pills everywhere, and you could, you could, there's about three or four cities in America you could get heroin in, 
port cities type stuff, like you know uh, New York, L.A., uh, maybe Baltimore, New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? Like it, you just couldn't get heroin in a lot of places. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I would know, you know, especially like anything that was actually e- anywhere close to resembling actual real heroin. And um, and then I don't know. We go fight a war. You know what I'm saying? In the Golden Tri or where the poppy fields, the most oh, poppy yeah. fields are in the whole world. And I'm not saying that's the only reason that, that that war took place or there's a primary reason, but but here, fast forward to now, hell, it's damn difficult to get a, a pain pill. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like at, a lot of um, you know, uh parents of of you know uh kids that had overdosed and died started going to Congress. You know, started basically letting their presence be felt and letting their, you know, feelings be felt, you know, and, and voicing, you know, their angst and and sorrow, you know, and, and I think some pr- pressure was applied, you know what I'm saying, for the, as far as the pain pills to, to tighten up on that. But then now, here comes this fentanyl shit, but even before that, I mean, they got sell, selling heroin in Huntsville, Alabama. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it, this shit's all over the place. But the 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 pills were cleaned up to a mm. to a large measure. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, it almost and it's just you, interesting. You know right. what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I wouldn't be shocked if could, our government is selling our own drugs to us. I wouldn't, or somebody is. Some or bigger it may picture. not. Who knows who it could be? Like you know, it could be some corporation that just has that much pool, and you know, they just you know funded this one campaign of this one person who has the influence. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, like I said, I just I can only speculate because they damn sure don't invite me to the meetings. Yeah, of whatever kind of shit. Yeah, I don't running. have got an even any email. <laughs> yeah, for real, you know, and um, and so I don't, I don't know, but those those things, what, what Arsenio Hall used to say, things that make you go, hmm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I got to go on his show one time. That was a real highlight oh, for me. Man, that would have been the shit, when his man. show came back on. That was the first show I ever got to do stand up comedy on. Was Arsenio? Arsenio, man, that was so epic when I was young, dude. Like, it was huge, man. man. And then in Living Color, bro. Yeah, in Living Color. I, you know, I used to watch Johnny Carson too. I actually remember watching Johnny Carson. Wow. You know, and that was, and I remember when he, when Jay Leno took over for him, and then I actually ended up doing the Jay Leno show. Wow. Yeah, and Jay Leno used to do the Cool Ranch Dorito commercials. But, um, yeah, man, David Letterman did David, man, that's just, what a blessed journey, man. You know what I'm yeah, you've gotten to have so many uh, unique experiences, especially for, you know, somebody from. Not bad for a farmer with a pitchfork, huh? Nuh-uh. Not uh, bad at all. Man, um, I, you know, my old high school football coach used to say, guys, you don't have to take a back seat to anybody. Rest in peace, Jim Holly. You know, and that's something that just stuck with me through life. You know what I'm saying? Anytime I feel overwhelmed or feel like, oh, I'm not worthy of this. No, no, you don't have to take a back seat to anybody. You know what I'm saying? Anything or anybody. You know, you, you, you know what I'm saying? You worked hard to get here just like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? You, like I say, you put your socks on one leg at a time just like everybody else. I take shits, they take shits. I fart, they fart, you know. You know, I like chalupas. They may yeah. or may not. You they know? may or may not. Yeah, sometimes I think my thing I struggle with sometimes, I mean, I struggle with a lot of stuff, but I really struggle with, I think, like uh, making, uh, like what other people think of me. Yeah. You know, that's always been really hard. I think Anybody that says that they don't. Is either just not cursed with any self awareness, and some people are just like that. Sometimes the biggest stars just they don't have self awareness. They don't they, right, so they're not even thinking about yeah. The beginning but how of do they how are people perceiving them? You know what I'm saying? It's like oh, some, it'd be a blessing. Yeah, and it a would curse. be a curse and a blessing. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the way it is with everything. But but yeah, I wish that didn't. Um, because I here's what I wish I had a little bit more of my own. I wish I'd had a bit more somebody helping me build my own self-worth when I was young. So I had a little bit more. It just wasn't a part of the culture of growing up, you know, like, like Yeah, that. but some people got it because they're, you know, somebody told, they, I just feel like some people got it. I'm not like having a pity party. No, I understand. I just wish I that I had a little more That's the reason, it. and it's, it's tragic that you don't have kids. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's tragic that I don't have, I know a lot of, and that's what we talk about, like that, that gap between, Males and females that keeps getting wider and wider. You know what I mean? Like in the way that we connect with one another, it just, what's your cash up? You know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's gotten a lot more like just out front transactional, it seems like, you know what I'm saying? And so I don't, 
since I got divorced in 2019, I haven't seriously dated anybody because I don't know how to fucking date in this world. But that's a whole nother story. But but I'm he saying like we're over 40, you know what I'm saying? And so like, yeah, bro, I mean, like I just know kid, a lot, man. I know we got to get of, a fucking kid, bro. I know a lot of real deal men that need to have kids. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because I would like to know what a child with my stuff and I love my parents, man. This isn't no they they did the best they could with with what they were equipped with, you know what I'm saying? What they'd been given. And they did a great job because, you know, I've done a lot of things and they and they're a part of that, you know what I'm saying? And and they love me, you know, but as far as just like believing in a in, in a child and like giving him the freedom to really like express himself and encouraging him and you know what I mean like and still being stern you know what I'm saying and, and be, being a disciplinarian but but just you know not discouraging dreams and you know what I'm saying like and, and they were just trying to protect me oh, you know what yeah. I'm saying by discouraging dreams by saying you you know that's just that's just silly foolishness you know what I'm saying like you you need to you know, have a, a different plan. You know what I'm saying? You need to have a practical plan, one that's realistic. You know what I'm saying? They were just trying to, you know, but I know now that all that's bullshit. That's programming. You know what I'm saying? That's fear-based programming, you know, and, and we can we can do a lot in this world. You know, you know it. You're evidence of it. And so I would, it, for us to have children and be able to just, and it might go all, you know, awry. Right. It might you go awry. Like, because we might, they might, Cause there's some craziness to the way we're wired too, you know what I'm saying? And they might a little too much love and not quite enough rigid upbringing might make it where they just go be hellions or something. Right, we just, might go the other way. Yeah, but you know, I, I just know a lot of men that Polo to Don, Cliff Kingsbury, friends of mine that over forty don't have kids. You Cliff know? that coaches Cardinals. Yeah, yeah, that's my boy. Oh man. yeah, really? Shout out to Cliff. Yeah, man. dude, Cliff is a king. I got, bro. We got to be real cool when he was coaching at uh, Texas Tech before he he got that job, man. And uh, that's that's a great fellow right there, man. He seems real cool, He's man. A we just kind of man. I'm telling you, every every area. That, I think Cliff Kingsbury should run for president, honestly. Gang, bro. I mean, he's just that kind of guy. Like, man, he. He can just relate to anybody. He's he's a principal guy. His principles don't get compromised for anything. You know what I'm saying? He stands on what he stands for. And, uh, you know, and it's just, I'm just using him as an example. Like, yeah, no. Polo the Don, great guy. You know what I'm saying? He's a he, brother of mine, like not friend, but a brother, super producer, produced 32, 33 number one records. You know, you don't have kids. I don't, I don't have kids. You don't have kids. It's just, that was almost unheard of, you know, like in the 1950s or whatever. You know, oh, you had having kids. The only thing you yeah. did, you know. You know, I worry sometimes. That honestly, I think I worry that if I did have kids, that there would be a, I'd somehow do, the same thing. Hmm. I think. I well, think there's I, probably I, some fear of my that. My girlfriend uh, was pregnant at one time. This is like 2000. Six, yeah, like right around that same new booty time when everything was coming to a head, and she had a miscarriage at uh, I think it was like four months, and um, just in those four months, when, when I know the way I felt, ex thinking I was getting ready to be a father, man, <laughs> it's a different feeling, man. Like it's like I got to get get my shit together because I can let myself down, you know what I'm saying? But I can't let a mini me down, you know what I'm saying? I gotta, mm. I gotta get it right, get it tight for this little joker right here. You know what I'm saying? I can't be playing about another life. That's, you know, and I can only imagine a child being born and looking at that child and seeing yourself in it, like some yeah. physical thing, your eyes or something. Just, I, I can only imagine how that would feel. And I never thought I wouldn't have kids, but I was kind of careful back in the quote unquote heyday. Cause I had so many friends that had multiple baby mamas and. Everybody's life was just miserable when that was the case. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, three baby mamas, and you know they got two other baby dads. You know what I'm saying? And it's Everybody, just, yeah, it's not good on it's the like child. It's like Red Rover at Thanksgiving. Yeah. So I didn't want that. I didn't. I didn't want to be a part of perpetuating that type of deal. And so I was, you know, and and then uh, God bless my ex-wife. I, I think maybe with us, just by the time we actually got married, maybe we were already kind of coming unraveled. And it just spiritually, it just never lined up the right way. Um, you think it'll still happen? Do you? Think I haven't about given it? up. I said, yeah. and I don't. I'm not too like thrilled about the prospects of being 86 years old at my child's high school graduation. <laughs> but you know, I my mean, dad was 70 when I was born, which is crazy, pops, man. Pops, that's what's up. I only say that is because I keep that, finding myself talking to guys who are 
we getting older and we don't have any children yet. So I start. I used to think my dad was crazy, and I'm like, damn, I just if I could beat him by ten years. You think years, it was just because be we were just dream chasing, man? Like you know, it's a good point, man. You know what, dream chase? It was like other things to, to me seemed boring, bro. Right. It was like you know, I could go have a family. I pop. Somebody had me, and they didn't, ain't doing shit out here. I could go fucking do that in a half hour if That's I want. Right. I felt that. Like I that wanted too, some creep. I wanted to like, what can I do? I want to. I just did not. I was scared to death of being in my twenties or something and feeling like my whole life was planned out. Like. Okay, oh. so I'm going to do this for like 46 years and then retire. Like, oh, my God. Like, hey, much respect to anybody that, that works like that because I'm not cut out for it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. Right, right. I'm not saying, uh, yeah, I'm not <laughs> yeah. saying it was horrible. I'm just saying yeah. I'm not, I could not have done that. It was not for that. me. You know what I mean? It just was not, I would I would have, if I didn't have create creativity, you know, this outlet of creativity that I have with writing, you know, recording music and stuff, like, I, um... I would have probably already like checked out of here. You know what I'm saying? It's it, it's that vital to me. And so just to be able to live that way, you know what I'm saying? To make a living that way, crucial. You know what I'm saying? But that's why I always tell people like, man, I'm I'm gonna be 90 years old rapping. Like, fuck, I don't give a fuck what you <laughs> like or don't like, like what you say about me, and you know, oh you old. <laughs> Who cares? Like, still don't make more money than you ever gonna make your whole life. But Sorry, I had to. I had to. That's but, good. A lot but, of people never get a chance to make but, millions of dollars. But, but my point is this: is like it's not a job. It's not a hobby. It's not like it's a. It's at the core of who I am. It's a function of my spirit, man. Like you know, what I'm saying it's. Yeah. It's. I remember Jay Z had a line where he said, "Get a grip, bitch. This is how I get through life." You know, but how I get through life and how I always related to that is this. You know, what I'm saying this is. You know, this was a man. It's just been so special. Like, like this this art form. You know, shout out to those people. You know, the black and brown people in in the Bronx, New York, in the seventies that you know were doing what they was doing and living the way they was living, and that all that formed this perfect storm. That you know, um, that this this music and this art form. I mean, in this culture, you know, sprung from. Man, I'm just, I'm so grateful. It found me, you know, on a dirt road 20 minutes north of LaGrange, Georgia. And it's kind of wild, huh? Changed my life, man. Like, you know, so I I honor that at every turn. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's nothing I put ahead. Of, I think hip-hop is a religion. I mean, it, what, aside from, like, the quote-unquote traditional religions, name something that's brought more people together from different walks of life worldwide, Man, it's it's had it's had quite the impact on this globe, man. You know, and, yeah, and, music, music has. Yeah, I, think. I mean, but but especially hip hop because, like I said, it's hip hop unified. You know, maybe it was just part of the just the timing of like um, when hip hop kind of exploded. You know, onto onto the scene. But man, like, there's just a lot of like I said, a lot of racist hearts, potentially racist hearts that could, or hearts that could have developed into. You know, being exactly what their their parents and their grandparents, you know, and and going on back down the line, were in the way they thought. You know what I'm saying? But um, I know people. You know that that like I said, it might be just be that one thing they could hang their hat on. Like, man, but I love right. outcast so much. You know what I'm saying? I so want to be racist, but damn, yeah, man. man, like, yeah, because then you because the the lesson to be learned is, yeah. The three six Listen, mafia that well, shakes yeah, me up, one thousand yeah. percent. Like, and the the lesson to be learned is is you know what? There's we're all human. You know what I'm saying? So we all have flaws, and you can't them sweeping indictments and broad ass generalizations. You know what I'm saying? Trying to lump everybody that looks a certain way into any kind of you know like bowl that just says all those people are just like this. You know what I'm saying? That's I know. There's I, no fruit on that tree. I wish <laughs> I wish you could. It would definitely make things easier. Yeah, but you know? I, but you know, I, I just don't you know, I, I have brothers that, that look a lot of different ways. Charlie's my brother, he's you know, he's a black guy, you know what I'm saying? I I I got a lot of black brothers, you know what I'm saying? I got some white brothers too, you know what I'm saying? I got some Mex Mexican Puerto Rican brothers, you know what I'm saying? Oh well. Yeah. And so, you know, that's I, a brother to me is someone that shares the same ideals and principles that 
that I that I have that I try to live. Yeah, by. it's funny, man. I got this new fitness guy or the this athletic coach, man. This black guy, and I've man, I just love. He's like, I love being around the dude, bro. Yeah, energy, he just, man. He, I mean, he like he inspires lifts you. me up. He inspires me. He like. And he's like one of the best fitness coaches, That's what coaches, a trainer's got to be too, man. It got to make you just want to be there, like to be near it and, and just get in, get in the thick of the shit with it. Yeah, he does that. But it also it's on like a, even more of just like, a, I don't know. Life just, in general. Yeah, it's like, man, it, it makes me, I feel inspired by him. That's you awesome, know? man. Um, that's great, man. I, so, love, I love being inspired. Like, that's I love really being my, inspired, bro. That's my drug. That's my true drug. That's the reason I would ever do drugs or, or you know what I'm saying? Like, because... I, man, is, if I'm inspired, if man, there's not much I couldn't do, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm inspired, I really feel like I could have been president or something. Like, yeah. but if I'm not inspired, you might want to get somebody else to help you carry the groceries in from yeah. the car. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm pretty useless. And um, so after, so going through, did do you feel like that having an addiction and struggling with it that it had an effect on your career? Do you feel oh, like yeah. your career has played out just no, kind of how no. it? Yeah, it, it 100 percent because um first of all, right after New Booty and after that that Cuz that was a top 1 that was like a Oh uh, no, nah, that was a number 1 record, man. Like like I you know, my Wikipedia there's some I Oh, I've, I didn't even look at your Wikipedia. Well, I've tried to change stuff on there, man. Like I don't they change it back. It's just crazy. Oh, they're but, fucking that's a mafia, bro. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. But anyway, and I'm not fucking 5'9" either. And, and take oh, that ugly damn, ass bro. picture off of there, bro. My picture's horrible, bro. Bring my shit. It's up, the bro. worst. Look at my Bring Wikipedia, me. dude. I don't look, look like let that. Let Charlie decide who ugly. You know what I said? Whoever's who who, ugly. Whoever controls the gates of my page, I must have fucked their girlfriend or something oh, at some damn, point. Like I'm bro. sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> who's who's a bad? Both of us got a bad. Look at this picture. Thing. Look at that right down on the right. Oh damn, bro. <laughs> Click on it. Oh my god, dude. You look like a hitman at an uh, Asian restaurant, bro. <laughs> Damn, bro. Vladimir. Yeah, 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 yeah. You look like a bro, Russian. Like I'm in America trying to kind of dress cool, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but like it's like flea market shit. Like, <laughs> now bring mine out there. My shit looks horrible too, bro. I look like I've been struggling, man. Damn, my shit fucking look bad. Damn, look at me. I look fucking retarded. Hey, bro. It just don't look like you. I look mentally retarded, bro. No yeah. offense if anybody's retarded, bro. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, Shout I am retarded. sometimes. Me but, too. But do you I just remember. I look at my. I look at them cross-eyed. I look something wrong with me. I wonder how old that picture was. It's probably six years ago. Shit. I mean that that picture of me. That, that's another. That's the fucked up part about it. I think Le guys be on that. You got a nice Two, outfit on. Two thousand five. Yeah, but I like you always say. Like he's like, don't ever shave your fucking beard again. Like that's what people say. I'm like, well, somebody should have told me that a little <laughs> earlier in this process. There's a lot of pictures out there. I me, mean, but anyway. And I had this egghead. Like I used to have this. I would be lazy and not want to go to the to the like real barber. I'm, yeah. I'm big on haircuts and shit now. But uh, I just shave my own head. All you know, like down to the oh scalp. yeah, to yeah. do whatever. Yeah, I cut my hair for like probably 32 years, man. Yeah, man. That's, that, you know, but or it's, whenever I could, so probably only about 16 years. But, um, but man, you uh, you don't look bad there. I feel like I look bad, but I feel like right there, you just don't look like you. It just didn't. That, that doesn't even look like you. Yeah, I went through a period. I was trying to fit in in Hollywood and look more clean cut. Yeah, you look like uh, you know what you look like. You look like uh, Dane Cook's like little brother, out of shape brother or something like. Yeah, like he Shane looked, Cook. Like, <laughs> Shane <he> Cook. <laughs> now he look like uh, dude daddy. Who? Uh, uh, blow move. Johnny Depp daddy. He don't look like Ray Liotta. Man, right there on that part, right there. Oh, I could maybe see. Yeah, him a I see like, like the younger, like Goodfellas yeah, Ray Liotta. I can kind of see that. Yeah, kind of good. Rest in peace, uh, Ray Liotta, by I the way. I know. Nobody even cared that he man, died, bro. That's just the world we fucking live in, man. Nobody even cared. These days, nobody. It's like, it used to be like, man. It's just like even a hit song now, man. It's like, you no know. Matter. It goes up. To, yeah, it's like you get a week. You know what I'm saying? And then everybody's on to something else. Well, know? dude, I remember we went camping one time when I was a kid with like a Boy Scouts or somebody. I don't know. Could have just been a damn pedophile, bro. Oh, Lord. But we was out Lord there. Lord And uh, I told everybody before we left, I said, you know, Jay Leno died. And they didn't have any social media. And so everybody the whole weekend was like, damn, Jay Leno died, man. And people were talking about it. Some guy, some some kid's dad was even crying about it. And then we got back and everybody's like, this motherfucker lied, bro. But nobody knew for three days, but it was like. Wow, Why, what's the point of doing that? Like, I think just I wanted to create some ambiance or oh, something, okay, you know. You. 
And uh, you want to create some like uh, what do you call it? Like uh, not nostalgia, but like morale. Like everybody. Yeah, we're in this, huh? Yeah, Let's do it yeah. for Jay, huh? Yeah. And uh, but I don't know what yeah. I was even talking about. But yeah, um, so take me through. Yeah. So let's just. Uh, so I want to be able to relate. A lot of our audience struggles with uh, addiction right. and just different things. That's a lot of our audience. A lot of people do nowadays. No doubt. You know, they were saying the other day, seventy uh, percent of uh, of adults in America are on one medication, or at least right. one medication. Um, so. What effects did you feel like it had on you as you Man, started all right, to so realize? Here's the deal. All right, so the so when I first went to rehab and I got out, like that was the height of my career. You know what I'm saying? I just you know how I, hard was it to be in rehab while your career was going? Well, I mean, at the that's, height. that's the time when I was like like trying to fuck everything that, that with a with a vagina and, and breasts and stuff. Like you know what I'm saying? So I was kind of on that tip. Like I I remember like, but that's when I honestly when I got over um you know being a, a, a homophobe. You know, because there were a lot of people, you know, I kind of went down there on some arrogant stuff. I'm withdrawing and I'm like, yeah, I heard y'all like to make people room with gay people too. Put me, don't, put me in no room with no gay really? people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was, I, man, I'm from, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm from the South, man. Like I ain't, I'm, I'm a pretty enlightened guy, but I just, I'd never been around any gay people to be honest with you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember you know we wasn't around any gays until you know, later. And so we fear what we don't, you know, what we haven't been exposed to, what we don't understand, what just a certain like um, presentation and depiction of something that we receive. And, you know, and one of the, you know, coolest, a couple of cool cats that I was in, in, uh, in treatment with were gay, man. And they, some of the best people I've ever known to this oh, day. Oh, yeah. And it just, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I was always so focused on black folks and white folks because that's really what I was, you know, in the in the mud with. You know what I'm saying? And so, but then I would be could be judgmental in some other way to some other group of people. It just it was just so flawed me. You know what I'm saying? But but I'm being around that experience and and uh, and meeting those guys and then countless other gay folks since then that that I've that I've had the pleasure of knowing. You know, it's I'm just not fucked up with it. I don't care as long as you don't harm. Um, Children, elderly people, mentally handicapped people, animals, or just people that can't defend themselves. Yeah. I'm, I'm not really judging a lot in this world, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't know what the hell you've been through. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what it's like inside your head and what your experiences have shaped you into, into becoming, you know what I'm saying? so. But there's just certain lines you can't cross. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the way it is. Yeah, you, I feel that with if you, If you man. do, we got to get you out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't be messing with children. and You know, you just can't be... You know, just just um, recklessly, go, you know, just pillaging humanity, you know, helpless humanity. But um, so after so you went to the rehab. Yeah, I blamed the music industry mm. and music for. So I went two years without doing music. Didn't I didn't go really go to the studio one day. I was going to N.A. meetings. I mean, so I was going to, you know, uh, 12 step recovery meetings. And um, were you getting better? Yeah, I was, but but at the same time, I wasn't. I was pretty much just. I, I had some pretty good at that time. I had some pretty good recovery, um, but you know what it was, man. I just wasn't. I was just sitting there, you know. And it got to a point where I, I started going to do shows, and it was kind of tormenting, like you know, going in these clubs and and just not being that that uh, atmosphere of recovery internally. It just it just got weaker and weaker and weaker, but it got to the point where clean and sober, like I really wanted to check out of here, you know what I'm saying? Because it just, I guess I just hadn't stuck around long enough for the for that you know, spiritual change to happen or whatever, even though it was a, you know, a, a long time, you know what I'm saying? Over a year. And um, I don't know, I just, it just was really, really excruciating and I was just white knuckling it. And I mean, finally I was just, I had no, it was either pick up a pistol or pick up a drink, you know? Yeah. And, um, but you know, I can, I can say that like, you know, I, I, then the next time it was like drinking really became an issue. You know what I'm saying? I didn't go back to the pills or, or anything like that, but you know, being a, a, an addict, like I'll make anything enough if that's, if that's all there is, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Or if I, if I've got myself convinced that that's all, um, you know, all that, that I that I can allow myself to do. You know, I can make anything, literally, like sex, you know, like 
any external thing, man. Like if, if I like something, I'm probably gonna do it till it makes me sick. You Damn. know what I'm saying? Yeah, me too. Yeah, man, I can do that. I can totally relate to that, man. I, I I will find anything to take me out of the present moment, you know, to kind of take me the, away from having the McRibs just, are back for a month. I'm just gonna eat them until I vomit McRib mm. every. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like I just, oh man, mm. if you had that new this or that, this new thing Taco Bell's got, you know, I'm gonna go. If I like it, I'm just gonna eat it until I hate it. Yeah. You know, a, a person, a woman, like, come here. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, we hate each other because you know. Cause we're toxic and you know we're we're like we're around each other too much and you know what I'm saying and it's like we melt into each other and you don't you've lost perspective on who you are as a person I, you know because we I just wanted to just give me give me give me you know what I'm saying fill up this hole inside of me you know and and uh, as I've learned you know that hole can only be filled with you know the spiritual component really like and that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people but. Uh, Cause really, all I think all we want is peace. You know, I just want some peace, man. You know, at this point, I, I, I don't know. I, I just, I know that I have given a lot to my addiction. You know, what I'm saying I, I can't say I lost it to my addiction. I say, I've, you know, I volunteered. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, but at the same time, like I, I couldn't just because it's been what it's been. I couldn't imagine it any other way. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know. You know, my, my best friend, Big Steve, always says that, you know, when he went into rehab the first time, and he's been, he went to rehab one time, and he's been sober, so he, 06, so 16 years. I mean, he works in, in recovery. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, um, and he quit playing football and, you know, and started a whole new life. And he says, if I kept playing, if I hadn't just, like, abruptly just started a whole new chapter, he said, There's, I wouldn't have been able to stay sober. You know, but me, because you don't, it's not like Brett Favre, your body starts letting you down and you age out of, you know, making music. Right, you're still in it. Yeah. And so, like, you know, I, I I kept going, you know, it's just like I don't know what else to do. It's like, you know, it's, it's just so, it's ingrained in me, man. It's just, a fun, like I said, a function of my spirit. And so then you start going back to other parts, you know, of it as far as like doing, because I really, the studio, I, I can handle. But it's it's that road, man. It's hard. Yeah, that road is is what's gonna ultimately always take me back back to to drinking, and you know, then ultimately some type of drug or whatever. Yeah, you know, that's one of the toughest things, man. I was, uh, I was in so much pain. I remember sitting in my in my garage one day and saying, "Man, I'm just, I wasn't even f doing anything. I was just sick of myself." Yeah. I was man. like, man, I'm so. How do I, I'm just, I am literally sick of myself. Man, I, I love All myself. All I could think about was myself, and it was kill. It was just like, I don't know what it was, man. I'm so, I, I'm in awe of how great I can be, like how amazing I can be. Yeah. And then I'm in awe of the piece of shit that I can be as well. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's crazy, man. It's, I just, I, I know other people must be like, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? Because like. You know, because people, <laughs> the people closest to me have been experiencing it just like I have. But even me, I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Because I've never, the only thing I've ever been consistent at is being inconsistent. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And uh, I don't know what it is, man. It's just something about, something within me. It's like, uh, I had a therapist, shout out to Richard Lee, Richard Lee Nielsen in Atlanta. He said, um, he called it the saboteur. You know what I'm saying? Like this, there's French. just something in He said, you just, there's a part of you you know, inside of you that just wants you to be unhappy. Just there's a part of you that wants you to be unhappy. Mm. So like, that's like the self-destruct mechanism of like, things are going great. You know what I'm saying? Met this new girl, you know, got this new situation, whatever, things are going great. Ooh, things are going great. I need to fuck some shit up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and it's not a conscious thing. You know, it's yeah, just, it's not even a conscious nah, thing. That's what's man. amazing sometimes is I got this little motherfucker inside of me that wants to, you know. He just likes to get it riled back up. Yes. Like, you know, like, it's the same reason why I told people Jay Leno died, man. <laughs> it really is, bro. I told everybody Jay Leno died. But Damn. it really is. It's because yeah. something inside of me, there needs to be, I need something to be messed up. Cause it's the oh yeah I, I, I gotta have somebody to fight you know what I'm saying like mm -hmm. an, or an idea that I'm fighting like that's the if I don't have that I'm pretty much useless like if you, I gotta have that edge you know what I'm saying something to light that fire you know what I'm saying and, and I I've made up stuff and tricked myself into thinking shit and whatever like just to come on let's get going 
But yeah, that's crazy, man. But it's funny because it's it might be just this is exactly the way ever. That's why a lot of times I believe I am exactly where I'm supposed to be because even if I behave that way, that's the same way I behave that got me to where. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The double edged sword. You know what I'm saying? And I think about that all the time too. It's like that it serves us and it just it destroys us too. Like it's like balance, I think, is the thing that if we have like an ultimate purpose as far as internally what I feel like we're supposed to accomplish uh while we're here is to learn some balance, you know what I'm saying? Like in some some discipline, you know, like like they say you we we're gonna suffer pain. It's either the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. Mm. And I've suffered the pain of discipline at times, and I and I reap the benefits. And I and and I've not been disciplined at times, you know. And and, and I've reaped unavoidably. The yeah, the pain of regret, man. Yeah, it's hard, man. It's also hard, you know. It's not also like it's easy. But I, I <laughs> yeah. man, I can just totally relate. You know, and, and nobody's got like everybody is is saddled with something. You know what I'm saying? So just because a person doesn't have the same issues that I have, and that's that's you know that's true humility. You know what I'm saying? Is that self awareness of understanding that? You know, I, I used to think humility was like acting inferior when you really thought you were superior, mm. like being sheepish, like oh no, yeah. I'm, this whole thing, you know, or just whatever. Like, no, I'm not. I'm not cute. Whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? Just not be, not taking compliments well, all that kind of shit. Like that's being humble to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, um. But I've I've come to learn, you know, as I've grown and experienced life, that um, humility is more like just kind of like a true understanding of self. Like I got some good qualities about me. You know what I'm saying? I got some good shit going on, man. But I also got some some fucked up shit like that I need to work on. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm in the process with it, with with working on those things. Yeah. And I'm okay with where I'm at. And I understand that I'm no better or worse than anybody else. You know what I'm saying? People just have, some people don't ever identify their strengths, you know, or, you know, they it doesn't register with them that, dang, this is how I can benefit from my strengths. You know what I'm saying? Like I can make a living or help others or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And so they just never turn them up or, or like shine that light on them and get them all the way, you know, hitting on all cylinders. But, you know, I I've just been in instances where other people, you know, like I'm good in a social setting. You know what I'm saying? Like, a cock I'm a cocktail party superstar. You know what I mean? Like, you know, just I can shoot the shit with anybody. Man, I get that from my pops, man. And um, and so people that aren't good in those types of settings that that aren't like personable people like that, I, I used to kind of maybe like look down on them a little bit. Like, oh man, you just ain't fly with it. Like me, you know what I'm saying? Like, until I was in a situation, I'm not gonna speak on what, what the, the what this situation exactly what entailed, but where I was completely lost mm. and a person that maybe I looked down on because they didn't have a social quote unquote social skills that I had was in their element and it saved my ass big time. You know what I'm saying? And it just, that just further like hammered that point home. Like we all, we all got some shit that, that, that we're good at. You know what I'm saying? We all got some shit we need to work on, man. We're all humans. You know, it's, it's and we're not, all going to need each other. Yeah, I mean, I promise you we are, man. I know. I promise you, you know what I'm saying? It's just like anytime, whatever group that you say, you know, like, they're the problem. I promise you, you're going to be in a situation where you need somebody from that group. I promise you, I've seen it too many times. I mean, it's just, that's just the way the universe sorts shit out or God sorts, sorts things out. Like, however you want to look at that, you know, but I've seen it pop up repeatedly in, in, in my life and just, you know, other people that wanted to be judgmental, you know, because we just, we all, it makes us feel better to some degree to be able to just blame other people for, you know, something that, that that's not going right, you know, in our own lives. But, you know, it's bullshit. Life just going to life, man. <laughs> yeah, and it's interesting, like you said in the beginning, like if you could look at life through a whole spectrum of time, it's unfortunate we're only able to see life a lot of times, right. or a lot of us are, just as right now. We're not able to see the past yeah, 3,000 years. We're not able to see it it's all. always right now. Right. And if we could get a whole, if we could really spin life like this and look at the spectrum yeah, of things, man. it would give us all a unique perspective. And maybe that's the perspective that's coming along in the future, like you were saying. Yeah, because uh -huh. I think even like when I was talking about like visiting battlefields of old battles and stuff, I think there's obviously becomes like a sicko element to it. They just go back and just like 
They're just there with like this hot chick oh, or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm gonna that take kind of this. Thing. I'm gonna take yeah. this broad out to the uh yeah. to the Ying now, Dynasty now, or something. Now this joke is gonna figure out. Not even that though, but like people going back in time, like jerking I, I, off. Yeah, type shit. Oh, dang, bro, that's gonna be sad, man. But that's just humans, man. But you are gonna have some dude going back. The in ultimate the, beauty, humans. Humans, we encompass the ultimate beauty. You know what I'm oh. saying? Like in the ultimate fucking ugliness, man. It's like, you know, our greatest gift is probably like if if you were some like evolved like alien species, you know what I'm saying? Look, just looking at us, you'd be so envious of the fact that we can feel the way we feel. Because mm. if you'd evolved to a so point far, where we can't even yeah, feel. Yeah, you don't have, there's no love. There's no emotion in you. It's oh. all just like. Logic and survival, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, imagine an alien comes back just to see like a mother hug a child. Yeah, or to see somebody crying because their girlfriend broke up with them. Yeah, and they can't even have tears. And anymore. they've actually evolved into just being one gender, and they they like spawn every spring, yeah. and that's how the new, you know, the new the gene pool, like that's how the new new booty. new people come. Yeah, like so, there's no it's just one gender. Like it evolved into that. Like that's ultimately what it feels like. We're kind of being prompted towards. I know. You know, but um, somebody come all the way back in time just to see a breast or a, somebody's yeah, dick. Yeah. Because they don't have it. it just envious of just like, but also like, man, y'all are stupid as hell. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Y'all yeah. feel shit. Why y'all want to feel still shit? Feeling? <laughs> yeah. Damn, y'all feel shit? Yeah. Damn, that's so played out. Man. Look at feeling. these people still feeling. That's why y'all keep damn blowing up <laughs> shit and doing everything because y'all be in y'all's feelings and shit, you know? So I there's know. something to be said for, you know, you couldn't imagine a life without emotion and feelings and because it kind of is what drives us, you know what I'm saying? But I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, it's just the double-edged sword that pretty much comes along with anything, if you think about it. Like, Dude, I think uh, you have such a – I just am fascinated by your perspective, man. The, the perspectives you've been able to live through and the perspective that you've been able to uh, um, not create for yourself, but uh, – learn and evolve into as you've as you've uh grown i don't rule man. anything out man and i and i just i i'm teachable you know what i'm saying that's one thing that i, I committed to, to always just be coachable and teachable because please present me with some i beg anyone out there present me with some new information that either improves upon some bad or dated information that i'm using you know what i'm saying like please br give me some new information if, if my information's wrong I welcome it. I encourage it. I need it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. and and sometimes it may not come from the people that you would want it to come from and the way you would want it to come, but hey, I can't tell help how to help me. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, mm. you know, and that's just, and it's just about, I just wish more people would just be unconditionally open-minded, you know, because, man, it's just, I, you know, I, I got into astrology recently, you know, or in the past couple of years and really started uh, learning more about it, even though for most of my life I was like, eh, you know, whatever. I just use it as a, a way to pick up girls. What's your oh, sign? Oh, yeah. You know? huh? What's your sign? Or look yeah, at this that. Is a conversation starter. But look at that it, star. It's starting to make sense to me that in the future it could be certain aspects of astrology could be looked at as science because it only makes sense to me that now if you were born at a certain time of year in a certain place, the air pressure was, you know, this at that time humidity level like all these things that we may not know they could have a, a major impact on on the way a human uh, mind and body and spirit develops you know i just think that it's that it's going to be in the future at some point it's going to be a lot more credence to stuff like that you know what i'm saying like and and i think whereas um religion not religion i don't even I, religion is just a man-made in my opinion just something that Man made as a way to, you know, to try and connect to, to a higher power. <laughs> yeah, but 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 it, I don't even think it was that. I think man can connect to to a higher power. Yeah, by himself, you know, or by herself. But I think in in some ways, religion was just to control people. You know what I'm saying? It's like um, when you look at like various religious institutions. I mean, it's hard to say that. I what did they say in that movie? The um. The Da Vinci Code or something like. Or, oh yeah, I just watched. Well, that he was it. like, he was like, um, asked the guy about God, and he said, "No, don't tell me what, what man has told you about God. 
tell me what you think about God. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And it's like, man, it's like any anything I'm told by a man, I'm just, I'm just no man, men are flawed. You know what I'm saying? Men and women are very flawed. So, you know, who knows what kind of bullshit might be attached to, you know, the reason that they're telling me this. You know, and that's not to say that I'm just would rule it out, but it's just to say I can't just accept it as just what it is as my concrete fundamental truth. Yeah. You know, but you know, religions helped a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? And and you know, my I come. My mother and father are Christian, you know, and I and I I'm a Christian, I would say, you know what I'm saying? But um I'm just not gonna just you ain't gonna just piss down my back, tell me it's rain, and me be like, Okay, no, it's rain. It's yeah, rain. you know, I'm gonna investigate things for myself. I'm gonna think for myself. Oh yeah, some of that's piss. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's I warm. Feel you. Yeah, I <laughs> know Yeah, it's warm. <laughs> and why three y'all standing yeah, back there? Yeah, man. Why three or four y'all standing? I know y'all been drinking damn beer <laughs> all day. <laughs> like y'all ain't got out the pool one time. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I've got you and Riff Raff got to get together and talk, man. I would listen to that for hours. Oh, I love bro. to talk to him, man. Y'all like, sound so much like the same. Um, we got to get up, man, for real, dude. Uh, yeah, I just uh, I feel so grateful to have gotten to spend time with you, and um, yeah, it, it means a lot, man, that, that, that we finally got to do this because it's a long time coming for sure. Yeah. We should go grab something. Y'all gonna eat or something? Yeah, we'd love to get something to eat. We'll go right down the street. If you want to check out more music, what else is what else can we they expect? What's Man, going this, on? I mean, honestly, I've I've put out music uh, with the exception of the two years that I was that I was talking about, which really set me back because that was at a time when the internet was starting to dictate um, music musical styles and trends evolving at a much more rapid rate. So, and that was like the worst time to take two years uh -huh. off. So it took me a while to just get caught up and. And I, honestly, I feel like I'm better now than I've ever been. You know, I was blessed to work with some really great producers early on. And and so I was good, you know, always. But I benefited from working with some great people. You know what I'm saying? Whereas now I'm kind of like able to be a more self-contained entity. You know, on my, I can go in the studio by myself and, 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 and write a hit. You know what I'm saying? Like every aspect of it. But um, I'm putting out music pretty consistently, man. Like I'm about to, I'll get. Kind of like in a lull for a year or so, you know, maybe do some other stuff and then just at some point I'm going to get riled back up on it, man, because it just calls me, you know what I'm saying? It's 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 that real to me. And, and you know, you're, you're fortunate as long as I'm breathing on this planet. If you if you like listening to my music, if, if it just doesn't make you vomit, you know what I'm saying? I, the good news is I'm as long as I'm breathing, as long as my mental faculties will allow me to do so, I'm going to be rapping. Are there other, uh, yeah, because there's no one that sound, there is no one still that sounds like you. I was listening to a bunch of your music this week and there was, uh, there's, I can't even explain it. And I don't think it needs to be explained. That's why. Well, you know, man, it's, it's like unique. what I like about the way you do your thing, man, is it's like, uh, the, honestly, the first episode I ever saw was Boosie. Oh, you know? yeah. And it was just dope, man. I was like, well, this is weird to me. Like, why is, like, this is just strange to me. And then you started talking and realized you were from Baton Rouge, like everything. And I was like, this is fucking New South as fuck, man. This is like dope as hell. You know what I'm saying? And I started getting into just the, the authentic way because look, every person that's ever been born into this world has something unique about them that sets them apart from every other person that's ever been born into this world. You know what I'm saying? We all have something in us that just separates us from everybody else. Doesn't make us better or worse. Just makes us us. And to me, great art, whether you're a quarterback, a painter, you know, a musician, a comedian, great art is about the ability to make whatever it is that makes you unique and different from everybody else and special translate into your art. You know what I'm saying? And and so I just really get off when I when I encounter people or when, when I'm able to observe cats that are, that are doing that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, dang, man. Like, nobody can compete with that. You know what I'm saying? If you just truly, like, get in your own lane and keep... The, even the attempt to compete with it is a loss. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, you just can't be another person, you know? And we're all inspired and influenced by, by right. others. That's not to say, you know, I, I have influences, many influences. I, I get influenced by things every day, and, I, and I'm not scared to... Like I said, acknowledge that. Give me some new information. Like, you know, inspire me in a different way, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but to really be, it's, that's the scariest thing, I think, is to try and be yourself. And that's so fascinating. Yeah. That. So, so when you do finally learn who you really are and embrace it and accept it, 
you cherish it, man. You know mm. what I'm saying? You cherish it. Like and and you definitely I I'm I'm sympathetic and empathetic to people that that haven't been able to 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 discover themselves or or embrace, you know, who they truly are because I know people's out here that can't that haven't been able to do it for themselves, so they 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 uh vent that that angst from not being able to to figure it out for themselves by, you know, judging and throwing stones at other people, you know, that and that's just the way it's going to go, man. It's, you know, it's just hurt people, hurt people, but and lost, man, I would and lost people get people lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would love to see you. I feel like you have such a calling to be able to just, I mean, you always, you're already doing it, but your ability to communicate, man, is really strong. And it's not a, I, I didn't know, I, I didn't have a super strong idea of what you would be like as, as a human outside of what I've seen of you or I've, heard of I've your done music. a pretty bad job, honestly, of just, you know, I, I've I've kind of hidden. You know, it's been a, it's been a rough, you know, like I'd say last five years, and I was, you know, us being, you know, the way we are as as you know addicts or or whatever it is that we're saddled with or blessed with, however you want to look at that, we isolate. You know what I mean? We, oh yeah, man. You know, and and I I get away from from people and places and things or anything that could potentially cause more discomfort. You know that that gnawing self-centered fear, that fear of nothing in particular is just like, if I go out there, I'm going to melt, you know, like just baseless. But yeah. And I, and I'm, and you know, I got some, some good people I work with Charlie, you know, it's also a brother of mine, my boy, Boogie, Jason, like just people that are some good people around me, man. When, um, when not necessarily, some people left me, a lot of people left. Some were justified, some weren't. Um, but there were also a lot of people that, I walked away from, you know what I'm saying? I withdrew from everything and everybody at a certain point. And so the people that were still around me, like, and they weren't, that's not something they signed up for, you know what I'm saying? To to be, to have this responsibility of fucking like salvaging or trying to get, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. We're confusing <laughs> folks, man. You, you know, and it's like, and it's like, I, all I can ever promise somebody like that is the good's going out way the bad, but. You know, it's it's um I just been blessed, man. Like that man sitting over there, man, I would not be here on this planet breathing. Really, he saved you a couple times, huh? I mean, not like not like literally. Not like Narcan, no, but you know. No, but just, you know what I'm saying? Like just I right, there, was, having there was nobody else, yeah. There was just nobody else. He was just ended up, you know, with that baton. Um, you Damn. know, and it's sad because I don't know sometimes if I could do that. Is if I'm real, I don't. I don't know if I could love somebody that you know cares. Oh, uh, he didn't. I mean, he, trust me, he didn't want to. Like he, I think he <laughs> at certain times, you know, what I'm saying like we done been into it, you know, and and uh, but he, you know, he ain't perfect either, you know, what I'm saying so. It's like sometimes, we sometimes the quote unquote sick one can, you know, can <laughs> yeah, for yeah, sure. the sick one got to be there for the sick yeah, one, yeah, you know, because we all. Just some old stupid ass human motherfuckers, man. Dude, I won't. Li I, I'll tell you this: I won't listen to well people a lot of times. I can only hear. I that's, that sounds like somebody that's bullshitting to me, like you know, a I well got, person. Yeah, <laughs> I got to hear from somebody that's sick. Yeah. Or that's, you we know. was talking about that last night. We were talking about how you know just that therapeutic value, you know, of, of, of one act helping another. Like when you know somebody's been through that shit, you know, the same, you know, and. and and just attraction over promotion, you know. Just we were just talking about all these these different principles and concepts, and and uh, yeah, I can, I can, you know, God bless anybody that's this this coming from a good place and trying to help, but I really can only be helped by somebody that I, that can relate, you know, because I'm just, you know, we just feel like terminally unique and was it terminally unique and fatally cool or something like that, like yeah, basically like I, I as I've always felt like not did they just I couldn't just relate to to people that that just hadn't experienced like a and we all experience pain that's not what I'm saying but it's almost like a somebody that's like <laughs> would inflict pain on themselves like we do you know what I'm saying it's like you know yeah I'm a super I'm a superstar with an inferiority yeah. complex like something I mean, like well, that well I'm a people pleaser that don't give a fuck what nobody thinks about me <laughs> that's yes. the real deal but the ego maniac with the inferiority complex the ego maniac with the inferiority yeah. complex man just a crazy son of a bitch a man. lot of us are out there man and a lot of us don't even know that we have this that you know that they that they have some element you, of it you know and my old sponsor again used to say that he was the, the people that 
pick up the drug or, or the drink or whatever. They're the blessed ones because that gets us that much closer to the solution, whether we pick it up or not. Hey. But some people go through their whole lives and they never find the thing that brings everything to a head where they do identify the fact that they got some shit wrong with them. You know what I'm saying? So they just go through their lives red, restless, irritable, and discontent and no idea why. You know what Fuck. I'm saying? God, that is a that is almost like a hell. Yeah, That's I mean, a hell. I know, I know some some people very close to me. I would say they fall into that category, and mm. there's just nothing. And they'll talk at you all day about, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you just got to be strong and all this stuff, you know. But it's like I'm just sitting there seeing the quote unquote disease like all manifest itself in in that person's life, and and that's just not even a conversation they're willing because they attach it to the drug. You know what I'm saying? Or the, right. You know what I mean? Well, really, that's just a symptom. You know what I'm saying? The prop, it's the it's the us problem. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I never had an issue with drinking, man. I never, I like, I didn't like drinking. I had to go pee. Like we probably all have to right now. I had to go <laughs> pee, bro. And I, I hated having to go pee because I didn't want to miss being around people. Right. And so I never liked drinking, man. Wow. Now I like something. I did start to like cocaine because it, and drinking was, it took too long to feel some type of way. I wanted to, cocaine, it was like, you could feel this, you could feel this. And right that hangover is awful though. Like, oh yeah, it was horrible. But I never, even. so it took me so long to realize that I had all these alcoholisms, that I had all this the restless, isms. irritable, and I discontent. self and me. Yeah. <laughs> It took it because it was no like it was so hard to pin the tail on the donkey, man. Yeah, because um, you want to attach it to a certain substance or something, you know. Yeah. Really, it's just that's your solution for a while. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you pick up, that that gambling, that food. It's at first, it's your solution. It it quiets the. The beast, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because I don't want to sit here with myself. I don't want to sit in the fucking moment, bro. Because at some point in my life when I was a kid or a baby or whatever, the moment wasn't, it wasn't good for me. Right. So it was not a safe place to be. So anything that keeps me, because the moment can see you clearly. The moment is a fucking mirror, you right. know? And I don't want to be right there, man, because I don't. <sighs> You know, I, I mean, we could go all day about it. I literally just thought that made me break out in a sweat. We could go all, we could go all day about <laughs> no it, No doubt, man. But it's look, man, great. I'd love to chat again sometime. And I, yes, I just think you have such a, uh, I'm, I feel grateful to have heard some of the things you said today. And I mean that. Man, I appreciate that, and, man. Um, and, I, and I'm glad that, you know. We don't, you don't need to isolate because we need you. Thank you, man. Thank you. For real, Theo. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. This oh platform. yeah, dude, you you coming in, man? I've had so many people that were so excited, bro. Good. So it's a blessing, man. You Charlie. know, because you know that's another thing too. Is just you know in, in your head, you're like, oh, I don't know about it. I got this thing where I think people when I at my shows that people pay just because they hate me. Like it's it's sickness. You know, oh what I'm yeah, utter sickness. So I don't think nobody gives a damn what I got to say or nothing. You know, that's just where it takes me. You know what I'm saying? But. It's good. It's good to hear that. And it's, it's good to hear you say all those kind of things. Yeah, man. I just think because there's not you, there's no other you, man. Like you said a minute ago, there's no, I mean, I, I look, man, I was listening to some of your verses a couple of days ago and it's like, nobody has whatever this is. Now they have different versions of it and yeah, shit, and man. they got newer and older versions. And of they got it. some things I don't have, right? You know? Agreed. Yeah, but, but but I got some. Sh I mean, you know, it was yeah. I mean, I you know, I, I hey, I'm blessed, you know, and we all are, you know, what I'm saying that, Amen, that's, bro. that's the that's the unique, that's the great thing about, you know, the the way humans are set up, where our accounts are set up, <laughs> you know, it's like, man, if you just we all got some qualities, man, that can that can be redeemable, you know, what I'm saying that can. We just got to, you know, what we feed will flourish and what we starve will die, you know, in our own spirits. Yeah, man. I got to uh, I gotta start feeding the good spots, man. We all do. We we all got to, you know what I'm saying, that's got to be vigilant as far as that goes. Oh. I damn sure. I tell myself a fucked up story. Oh. And what they, when they say whatever story you're telling yourself is true, you know, so. Um, I know, and I get tired of living my old story, man. <sighs> That's what, you know, I get tired. Sometimes I start to realize, man, is this, you know, whether it was your story or whether it was your truth or not growing up, 
how long you want to keep telling yourself that just because of what it makes you feel like. This is today. just who you are. This is right. just what it is. You know what I'm saying? That's the big, you know, that's the biggest cop out, you know, and, I, and I'm very guilty of it. You know, yes, it's, it's, it's resignation almost, but it's like. But it's hard when it's giving you also the the flint and the steel. Because you feel like you're going to lose it you all. Are. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I, if I, tur- if I. If I diminish any aspect of it, then it's all gone. If I don't have my story, then who the fuck even am and, I? And it's kind of it's kind of happened to me like that before too. Like I just I'd, I'd rather die than I'd rather keep going way beyond the gates of insanity and hell than just sit there mundane and just like that ain't it, bro. Like that's not you know. I, and and like I said, sometimes maybe I didn't put in enough work. You know what I'm saying inside the you know the program whatever. You know what I'm saying and. So I didn't ever reach that point where I could feel that peace and that freedom and and still have my good shit and and then it's an ongoing process even from there. It's not like it just well, it look. just happens one day and you're just like, oh, I'm good now. That's no, the, it's a, then it's an ongoing process yeah, too. And it's like, how much do I want to take care of myself? Because there's a part of me that don't ever want to take care of myself because it ain't even my fucking job to do it. And that's the part too inside of me Good's sometimes God that. Uh, this is somebody else's job. Why do I have to do it every day? You know, I still think like that sometimes. And some of that shit's hard <laughs> to kill, bro. Um, but tough. I felt like I was in nine meetings today, man. No, that's what I feel like too, bro. You. I really do. I feel like that too, man. And I've been in the program for five and a half years, six years. And I've only, I'm still, on, I just got to step nine two days ago. That's crazy. So, but we'll see, you know, the, the particular fellowship I was in, like, they, just the steps are worked slower, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, with the workbook and stuff, and and uh, that's the fellowship I prefer. But I know, like, you know, some of those, some in other fellowships, you know what I'm saying? Like they, like you know how they used to do in the old days, like you work all twelve oh, steps yeah. over the weekend, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, you hear stories about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, because it's it when you break it down to its simplest form, you know what what the the, the steps are actually trying to accomplish. Um, it, it it's really not that complex a process, you know what I'm saying? It's just, um, you know, cleaning up and you know and and um, yeah, trusting um, in God, yeah, and cleaning mentioned, house, cleaning house, you know, doing taking a real realistic inventory of yourself, trying to make amends for the wrong you've done, you know, and and then trying to help other people. That's it. That's it. Well, you helped me today. Bubba Sparks, thanks so much for spending time, bro. Thank you, Theo. Much love, brother. Gang, baby. Hey, man, tell Riff Raff I'm, I'm, only, I'm, I'm looking for I'm going to send him this link. He'll fucking love it. He'll love That's it, bro. Up, He's one of us. He look, he loved to hear his name. You know, he loved to hear people care about him. He's man, one of there's no, it's just, it's a joke that me and him hadn't, you know, we, that we hadn't uh, connected already it's because retarded. I know we got several mutual friends and stuff. Yeah. So. yeah, y'all have to, man. Thanks again, bro. Much love, Theo. Now I'm just floating on the breeze And I feel I'm falling like these leaves I must be 